Baseball Super Regionals, presented by Capital One. They have been calling the Hogs all afternoon. The Hog pen is packed. Another crowd of close to 12,000 expected. Tusk has his pregame meal. And guess who's back for one more night? Go Hogs! <laughs> we need you at Bomb Stadium. Well, we're here, Hawk Nacious, Hawk Nauseous, at South Carolina and Arkansas. Get it together for game three. In game one, it was Carson Shaddy who powers the Hawks to victory with a bases clearing double that provided the separation. And then in game two, it was this guy, LT Tolbert, with a grand slam. Actually, South Carolina went back to back with home runs as they win game two, eight to five, setting up this. Winner head to Omaha, game three contest. Teams that are already heading to Omaha, North Carolina and Oregon State have had their feet propped up. They're getting rested. They have had a couple of days off. Meanwhile, Mississippi State played late into the night, as did Washington and Texas earlier today. Well, they're heading back for the first time since 2014. And a pleasant good evening, everybody. I'm Dave Neal. These are my All-Americans and big leaguers, Chris Burke, Ben McDonald. Glad you could be with us tonight. And Ben, let's start with Arkansas because uh, in the middle of this lineup, they've got two young guys. And if you don't know them by now, you will. Casey Martin and Heston Kerstad. Yeah, it's a deep lineup, but they've hit 300 this year. And I'll tell you what, they've hit 92 home runs. And the freshmen have set right in the middle of it. If you look at Casey Martin, there's really nothing he can't do. He might be one of the most complete freshmen we have seen in a long time. He has shined so far in this super regional. And Heston Kerstead hit his 14th home run for the Razorbacks yesterday. He, that is a rookie record for the Razorbacks. So they set in the middle of this lineup, and they really have set the tone this year. Well, South Carolina's done something a lot of teams haven't been able to do, and that's win a couple of ball games here. Arkansas is 34-4 and four inside Baum Stadium. Two of those wins go to Mark Kingston's Gamecock Club. Meanwhile, this South Carolina team, they have found some power in the middle of their lineup as well. And, Berkey, let's talk about LT Tolbert and the impact he's had on this lineup. Yeah, he has feasted on Razorback pitching, has three homers and ten RBIs against the Razorback this year, specifically two grand slams, one in the SEC tournament, one yesterday that blew the game wide open. He's homered in back-to-back -back games in this Super Regional, and he has become kind of the emotional leader for this club. And there will be a whole bunch of motion tonight, Dave, in a big game three. Three home runs in the postseason for LT Tolbert. It is game three. The winner is heading to Omaha. Who will it be, the Hawks or the Gamecocks? You've got to stay with us to find out. Goodbye, my minions. Hey. What's at stake? South Carolina's 12th College World Series appearance. For Arkansas, it would be their ninth. Somebody's heading there after this one. There are no tickets available. Isaiah Campbell getting the ball. Ben, redshirt sophomore. Big boy, what do we like about him? Well, you like the fastball and you like the size. Big kid. You see six foot four, 225 pounds. The fastball is going to be a good one. It's going to be anywhere from 89 to 95 miles an hour. Changeup is probably his best out pitch. He'll attack with a Breaking ball as well, but I think the key for him tonight is strike one. When he's throwing strike one and putting hitters on defense right away, he's really good. And he'll face a lineup that is very confident tonight in South Carolina. Danny Blair getting the start, who has found some at bats here late in the season. It was mainly a defensive replacement, but got hot in the regional in Greenville, North Carolina, over at East Carolina, and started game one for South Carolina. Looks at a strike, the 220 hitter out of Bel Air, Maryland. Came in yesterday, midway through the game, as a defense replacement for Noah Campbell out in center field. And a check swing that is fouled. It's one and two on Danny Blair. Well, one thing you see with Isaiah Campbell, Ben, it's easy velo. I mean, he, he just looks like he's playing catch. That one was 94 miles an hour. There's a, there's a lot to like about the way he moves on the mound. Yeah. I love the window it comes out of. It comes from, you know, more or less right over top. And he's got a really good angle coming downhill. Here's a chopper out to short. Biggers fields and throws, and that'll be one out. 
This South Carolina lineup features Carlos Cortez hitting in the two hole. He can certainly get one out of here in a hurry. 15 homers on the year. Madison Stokes, another guy. He's gone yard here at Baum Stadium this weekend. Jonah Bride, Justin Rowe, LT Tolbert with eight home runs. Hunter Taylor behind the plate. Jacob Olson will hit eighth. And Matt Williams over at first base getting the start tonight will hit ninth. But Carlos Cortez, Berkey, he has uh, been confident. Four hits, four out of eight so far in this super. Yeah, hitting 500 overall in the tournament. 11 for 22 going back to the regional. But yet to hit a long ball. Hadn't jumped ship just yet, which for him this time of year, that's, that's a homer drought. But, boy, he's swinging with a lot of confidence right now. Cortez led him in the Greenville Regional. And he was 7 for 14 at the plate. Cortez in the NCAA tournament with 11 hits. And against Arkansas this year, he's at 333, 7 for 21. That one misses inside. Gamecocks midway through the year didn't look like they were headed to postseason play, but boy, they got it rolling down the stretch. Lost four of the first five SEC series, finished up with five straight conference series wins. Lost a midweek game to Presbyterian. Had one of those team meetings where either you're on board or you probably should leave. And I think uh, the guys decided they were going to stay and fight through this. Whatever was said worked. Yeah. They took their game room from them. Isn't that what we heard? Yeah. <laughs> got to pay a price, right? Got punished. I got them going. Take away that Fortnite. That'll wake you up. Yeah. So Cortez draws the walk, and now Madison Stokes will step in. Stokes, a senior from right there in Columbia, South Carolina. What a senior season he's had. A 10th round pick by the Phillies, hitting 330 with 11 home runs, 44 runs batted in. He has found a nice little comfort zone in that DH spot. Arkansas one game one nine to three. South Carolina bounces back yesterday wins eight to five. And despite the wind blowing in at a pretty good clip. We've seen the ball get out of this yard. Yeah, it's been jumping. I mean, the, the most home runs hit in regional play was here at Baum Stadium. To, today the wind may be a little more controlled than it was yesterday, but it gets whipping in off of right field. Hadn't bothered LT Tolbert any. 0-2 oh, on Stokes. Cortez over at first. O2 oh, outside changeup. Now he will throw a cut fastball, and I, I don't know if that's what that was. It, it almost looked like a cut fastball. Yeah. Or he cut the change more, up one or the other, sense. but I think it was back-to-back -back cuts. He'll throw a big overhand breaking ball, too, a little more loop to it, but he'll shorten that breaking ball every now and then and just kind of cut it. And I think that's what, what that was, just kind of cut it off the outside corner. Yeah. Well, he hit the mitt, but Cook was setting up off the plate. And that's how you can tell. I mean, if you ever want to know if a pitcher's on his game, just watch the catcher. Watch where the catcher sets up. Watch where the glove is and see how close Campbell can come to hitting that mitt. First innings are usually the toughest ones because of the rhythm factor in this environment. Lifted in the air. To right field into that wind. Eric Cole back to the track and he'll make the catch. That ball was hit. Yep. Just the wrong day, wrong time of the day. Maybe if the wind dies down a little bit later, but that ball leaves the yard in a lot of places. Yeah, that's a cut fastball. That's what he's kind of going to here in the first inning. A lot easier to control those cut pitches than it is the big overhand breaking ball. Jonah Bride, the senior. 
who was making his 186th consecutive start. Boy, it's got to be nice at this level to be able to just pencil in a guy every night. Know you're going to get some production at the plate, get some solid no defense. Doubt. Competitive at bats, mature approach, and, yeah, the defense is, is always rock solid. 23rd round drafted by the A's a few days ago. Mark Kingston in his first year at South Carolina. Been around the game for a long, long time. Part of a College World Series championship team when he was an assistant coach down at Miami. Came over from South Florida where he had those guys rolling in the right direction. South Florida with another good year in 2018. So he left them some talent down in Tampa. Yeah, he's been everywhere. Assistant coach at Purdue, Tulane, Illinois State. One and two on Jonah Bride. Cortez still over at first after the walk. Berkey, you saw Campbell. The SEC tournament looked pretty sharp. What was effective with him on the mound? Just command. I mean, I don't think anybody's ever questioned his stuff, but the, the ability to work to both sides of the plate, specifically with the fastball, he tends to nibble. And when he finds his command, he can really be tough. Mm. There you go. He found his command on that 2-2 pitch. Inning is over with the strikeout. They're rowdy here at ball. South Carolina and Arkansas. Somebody's going to Omaha. Who will it be? Can Carmen Majinski lead the Gamecocks, the freshman from Hilton Head, South Carolina, getting the baseball tonight? And what an environment. Now, both these teams do play in big environments, big stages during the regular season at their respective parks. So Majinski probably used to this, but nonetheless, what does he have to do, Ben, to be successful? Well, they got a big fastball. You see, he's 90 to 94. Now, he throws a lot of two singers, a lot of sinkers. He likes to stay down in the zone. And when he's good, he's getting twice as many ground balls. And he is fly balls. That's his thing, is being down in the zone. He's going to show you a breaking ball and a change up as well. Arkansas's lineup is what we have seen throughout the weekend. Cole, Martin, Kerstad, Bonfield, Fletcher, Carson, Shaddy having a great super regional. He has been the rock of this team throughout the season. Jared Gates, Grant Cook behind the plate, and Jax Biggers. 292 is your nine hole hitter, and he is swinging it as well as anybody here. 92 miles an hour. First one in there for a strike to Cole. Boy, that one just missed. That's where he's going to have to be, right down there below the knees. I wonder what it'll be like in the first inning mode. This atmosphere a little bit juiced up. Sometimes those sinker ball pitchers can get ele elevated a little bit, Berkey, when they're pumped up, and that's mm. when they get turned around. Yeah, well, now it's two and one to Cole. It was a fourth round selection. The 122nd overall pick by the Kansas City Royals. He's had a quiet super as Eric Cole. Yeah. Hadn't quite gotten going yet. Hit a bullet yesterday. He got robbed right off the arm of Sawyer Bridges. Could have scored a couple runs and made that game real interesting. Closer from South Carolina came in early, and Cole had a chance to get the Hogs within a few, and the ball ricocheted off Bridges' arm right to Tolbert. Other than that, there hadn't been a whole lot. On a 3-1 pitch, pops that into the seats. The Hawks have been consistent all year. I mean, they had their issues on the road, but along with Florida, the only two teams in the SEC ranked in the top ten from mm -hmm. week one to where we are now. And Dave Van Horn, you can't say enough about putting this team together, but there are few weaknesses on this club. And Cole will draw the wall.
Well, that's not the start you want as you run through the two most talented freshmen maybe in the country in Martin and Kerstad. So Casey Martin, who made a stellar play at third, has had some good at-bats, hitting a 341 clip, 13 home runs, was tied for the team lead with Cole and Kerstad until Heston went yard yesterday afternoon. So Kerstad, who's on deck, has 14, a freshman Arkansas record. Well, that's a danger with this Arkansas lineup is because for a pitcher, you got to be on your game from the beginning. And these first innings are the toughest one because you don't know what kind of rhythm you're having. You don't know what kind of start you're going to get. And all of a sudden, you got to face a guy that's got 13, 13, and 14 home runs and back to back to back. I miss what the uh, what Billy Hayes was upset about. Well, I think he, he actually actually went down to first base and asked Casey Mosier if Martin swung. He did the old uh, appeared that way like he did. The, he pointed right I there know where the pitch was. Yeah, he must have blinked on the yeah. pitch. There's a couple of uh, pitches that we've seen already. La just foul. Let's go back to that opening pitch of this at bat for Martin. Well, there was a couple of Cole that were awfully close as well. Here's a breaking ball that goes down. But then he, he came out and, like you said, was pointing to Moser on the swing, which didn't appear to be much there. So one and one on Casey Martin. You know, there's some guys that step in there, and you just they just have that 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 look that something, as you like to say, presence. Well, yeah. And he's got it. Yeah, he does. He he's got it. That is for sure. I'd say this is one of the liveliest bodies I've covered since calling college baseball. It's an explosive athlete, and he's defended this week. We've seen him run the bases. He bunted for a hit yesterday, and he hadn't hit the long ball yet, but 13 homers as a true yeah. freshman at 180 pounds. I mean, you talk about complete, and he, yeah. he is a, that's, what, that's what really jumps. We've seen some freshmen hit homers. Some can really run. Some's pretty good on defense, but there's not a weak spot here. It is top to bottom. Neither one of these teams run much. South Carolina's ninth in the league in stolen bases in this SEC this year. And Arkansas was 12th. These guys are getting them on and trying to get them over by the yeah. big stick. Well, you're in scoring position when you get to first base for Arkansas. They could just have so much power. That'll drop in front of Cortez out and left. Two on and nobody out. So elite. Elite hitter, elite barrel control, elite feel for his body as it moves through the rhythm of the swing. Watch him extend the barrel out the front part of the hitting zone. Release the top hand and extend the life of the barrel just enough, enough to dump a breaking ball into left field. Those are high-level moves from a very young player. Sometimes you got to hit ugly. If you can't hit ugly, you, you probably aren't going to hit 300. It's not always going to be synced up. It's not always going to be on time. And the best of the best can hit even when things get a little out of sync. And here is Heston Kerstad, the SEC's freshman of the year. Average sitting at 343, best on this team. Thompson home runs as well, and he will look at strike one. Both these teams had easy work in their regionals, sweeping through their respective events. South Carolina over in Greensville, North Carolina, and Arkansas hosting here last weekend. Uh -oh. That ball's touched. But hooking foul. Yesterday he went a little center field on his burger. Yeah, and that's what we're used to seeing from him. Dead central to Oppo. That's kind of his honey hole. Likes to stride closed, let the ball travel, and use that backside power. And he just fouled a ball off his kneecap, so that's why you see him kind of limping around the bases right there. But on that delivery, he got the barrel out and just barely missed a quick homer to the bullpen.
Ground ball. Out to Bride. Nobody's there to cover second, and then he throws it away. Here comes Cole. One nothing. A defensive breakdown again for South Carolina. Where was Justin Rowe? Well, and, and look, they play these shifts, and I think Rowe's pointing at Tolbert. I think Tolbert's supposed to cover. So see how Tolbert starts closest to the bag. Ground ball to Bride. Tolbert's supposed to be there. Rowe comes over just because Tolbert's not there. Bride decides to redirect. But that's the danger of shifts if you haven't practiced that enough. Of course, we're deep in the year. But Tolbert looked like he broke the wrong direction, and nobody's covered second base, and Bride's hung out to drive. Boy, another error for South Carolina. They had a tough time last uh, last night. They came into this super regional with the fourth best fielding percentage, but it's dropped to seventh after the errors last night. Yeah, I mean, not very often you make four errors in one game, and that's what they did last night, but yet they won the ball game. And that was the one consistent thing for South Carolina all year long. Even when they were struggling a little bit in the beginning of the season, the defense was very good, but a little miscommunication has cost them big time so far here in the first. I mean, so uncharacteristic for South Carolina. I mean, they have been about as clean as anybody, but it was bizarre yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, just a couple weird plays. Like, this is a great range play, and then they can't finish it on the end. All right, then Taylor picks it up. He throws it past Tolbert, and just, just really abnormal for a team that's played very consistent. Now, this was a mental error. Rowe tries to rush a throw in the ball game where they're up four runs. And so just a bunch of things that just didn't seem right with the South Carolina defense. Now, it didn't cost them the ball game. They right. still won the game. So normally you flush that and move on and think, okay, we'll play better tomorrow, but not a good start. Arkansas, when they score in the first inning this year, they are 20 and three. They get on you and stay on top. He's got his work cut out for him here to keep it keep this game close because you got you still got nobody out and here come the big boys Yeah, you're almost in a situation now. Where I'm just thinking ground ball I mean, I'm in this situation I almost give up another run if I can turn a double sure. play now if I get the two strikes It's different if I get you 0 2 or 1 2. I may take a shot or two to punch you out yeah. Line drive base hit off the bat of Bonfield Martin will score cursed that all the way over to third and it's a 2 nothing ball game. You want to talk about veteran hitters? Runner in scoring position, sit on a first pitch breaking ball. And he's not just sitting on it. He lets this thing travel, catches this thing so deep. A backside bullet, that is a hitter. Watch how back he stays on this ball. Sitting on a breaking ball, rips it past Matt Williams. And the home crowd is fired up early here at Bomb Stadium. And going back to what we said about Majinski, can he stay down? Can he beat down? You see what that breaking ball was? I mean, sitting right up. Now, a good piece of hitting, but still, that ball's down. It's a ground ball instead of a line drive. It's a different story, but he has been consistently up in the strike zone, has Carmen Majinski. Dominic Fletcher. The sophomore out in center field. Runners at the corners and still nobody out. A couple of arms already up. Demurius ran out there as well. There's Lawson. Parker Coyne ran out there. All hands on deck in a game three at a super. Bomb Stadium is hopping early on. Yeah, a little late arriving crowd, but they here. We had the third and fifth largest crowds the first two nights. Over 11,000 in both of them. They set the could set the all-time record tonight. Oh, my fastball at 92 miles an hour. There's the first out of the inning. 
Carson Shaddy, the second baseman, the senior, 339 on the years, had a really solid Super Regional. The fans love him. Oh, the hometown kid has been coming up big for the Razorbacks. A rocket off the left center field wall. Overflow of emotion. Yesterday was a two-run bomb into the bullpen, and he has been the star of this lineup the last couple days. Three for five here in the Super. Six runs batted in. Got a chance to drive in another one right here. With one out, runners at first and third. Shaddy, a 10th round selection by the Nationals. He's kind of been the spokesman for this team throughout the year, a, a real leader in the clubhouse. Just like the perfect guy you would want to be the face of a program as a senior. Yeah, what a luxury to have a kid like this back for his fifth year. That is deep to left. Way out of here. Three run shot, Carson Shaddy. A guy that grew up a Razorback fan since he was born. Goodness. A dad played here, and there he is. You know he's a happy guy right now. Mama happy. Nine runs batted in in this Super Regional. Oh, he talked about being down. Got to be down in the strike zone, especially in the first inning. Look at this fastball. I mean, center cut, belt high, where most of them have been so far. And I mean, you couldn't ask for it better. I think that one landed in Bentonville. <laughs> Jared Gates, one out, one and two at the plate. Gates on the year, 245 hitter. Ground ball out to second. Boy, this is just one of the prettiest moves in college baseball to me. There's just a grace with which he moves and, and watch the finish. Oh, it's a beautiful thing to watch. A fastball up in the zone. The barrel compresses the back of that baseball. And at that point in time, there's not much to do but to celebrate. And you know that feels good, Ben, for the starting pitcher. I love it when I'm sitting there and you're putting up crooked numbers. Five nothing. Here's Grant Cook. And what would this inning have looked like if they'd have turned that double play mm -hmm. with Kerstad? Boy, it would have been a totally different feel. Cook, a 250 hitter on the year. But a tough time against South Carolina this year. Just 211 against the Gamecocks. Four for 19. And he'll look at a strike there. It's one and two.
like the perfect storm. I mean, you get a pitcher that's emotional. He's up in the strike zone. You get a walk, a base hit, a play that should have been made on a double play, mm -hmm. miscommunication. And Arkansas is just too good. You cannot give them extra chances. One hops in front of Cortez. So Cook with the base hit with two outs. The ninth man of this inning coming to the play to Jax Biggers. Biggers, the junior, has his average up to 292. He looked at a first pitch strike. If you're just joining us, you'll see the left hand, the pointer finger, all taped up. Got hit with a baseball toward the end of the regular season. Missed a couple of games, but has uh, got a little splint on there. Wraps it up for every game, and it's on his glove hand. So out there playing shortstop, and it hasn't slowed him down one bit. Matter of fact, he's been red hot with that bandage on. Maybe there's something to it. He's hit 571 in the Super. He's four out of seven this weekend. Yeah, he's swinging the bat awfully well. Uh-oh. Touches that one out to right. Olsen on the rod. He'll make the catch. Carson Shaddy with three home runs in the NCAA tournament and 14 runs batted in. A big moment for the young man in front of his dad, Chris, his mom, Holland, and in front of 12,000 Razorback fans. Uh, it's all coming your way next week. College World Series, TD Ameritrade, Omaha, Nebraska. Who's going to get there? Of course, Florida and Auburn coming up in just a little bit. Game three there. Texas Tech out in front of Duke as we speak. And Texas advances. They win that series two games to one. And Texas' first appearance since 2014, their 36th overall trip to the College World Series. That is clearly way out in front of everybody else in the country. Yeah. And David Pierce gets his first one. Cody Clemens just like continues say, to impress. Cody Clemens just keeps hitting yeah. and just hitting the long ones. Justin Rowe will step in, first man up for South Carolina, the number five hole hitter, followed by Tolbert and Taylor. Justin Rowe's having a great year. I mean, just a great year. Had an error yesterday, but made a heck of a play to get to the ball. But I don't think anybody saw this type of offensive season coming from a Justin Rowe. Well, that'll take some of the pressure off when you put up yeah. a five spot in the first, huh? That makes a lot of the nerves go away if you're on a bump right now. Two and two on row. I will say this. If you're going to give up five, right. you do it in the first, right? If you're South Carolina, you're sitting there going, well, we probably have to score six or seven runs to win this game anyway. Right? The last thing you want to do is give up five spot in the seventh or the eighth. Justin Rowe called third strike. Back to back K's now for Isaiah Campbell. LT Tolbert coming to play. We know what he's done. Just been launching balls. Solo shot in game one and a grand salami in game two. Dropped the back knee on him yesterday. A launch piece over the right field wall into that win. Tolbert's playing at a very high level. And you love the old school Bash Brothers. With a little new school flavor. They went off kind of off the top rope with the Bass Brothers. I like it. When we talked to LT yesterday after the game, asked him how that uh, how that went, that little forearm yeah. shiver, and he says, well, it looked cool, but then it hurt. Yeah. Shortly thereafter. Nah, you can't admit that. <laughs> Come on. I don't think he anticipated at the moment that it would be that hard of a forearm Bass Brother type move. This is what you get from Campbell when he's good. Just darting heaters downhill. We saw two really good fastballs to put Rowe away. 
There's another painted at the knees heater to start Tolbert off. Out to short, Biggers fires, and that is out number two. That's a big out to get Justin Rowe out. He was 8 of 19 against Arkansas this year. LT Tolbert coming to the plate. Or, excuse me, Hunter Taylor coming to the plate. The catcher at 265. Nine homers, 34 runs batted in. He'll hit with two outs. Thank you, Mike Morgan, Lance Cormier, Dave Neal, Chris Burke, Ben McDonald from Baum Stadium here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And, boy, you guys, if you weren't with us over on uh, ESPNU, you missed a big first inning for the Hogs. They just put it together. Nine guys came to the plate. And it was Carson Shaddy with a three-run home run. That was the big blow in that inning as we are in the top of the second in a game three Super Regional. Game one went to Arkansas, nine to three. Game two went to South Carolina, eight to five. Hunter Taylor steps in, South Carolina catcher hitting seventh in this lineup. Isaiah Campbell on the mound for Arkansas. Gave up a walk to the second batter of the game, Carlos Cortez. So he has faced just one over the minimum here in the early going. To the right side, high in the air. Shaddy says he has it, and he does. One and a half in the books here in Fayetteville. Those of you on ESP and you that have been watching, switch it over to the Deuce. We'll see you then after the break. The NCAA Baseball Super Regionals is presented by the Capital One Venture Car. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? And in part by Heineken. Open your world. Enjoy responsibly. And Doritos for the bowl. Out in the hog pen. They came cruising in, getting set up early for this game, and there it is now. Going to be close to 12,000 filling in to Baum Stadium today. Winner head to the College World Series. Arkansas up 5 to nothing as we head to the bottom of the second inning. Dave Neal and Chris Burke. Ben McDonald and this guy joins us now. Graham Lawson, the junior, transferred in from Spartanburg Methodist College, getting the baseball. 6'1", junior from Woodruff, South Carolina. Yeah, fastball's a pretty good one. It'll be 89 to 93 with some really good arm side run. He likes to sink it down in the zone. You see the strikeouts versus the innings pitch. Pretty good strikeout to walk ratio as well. Already had a little bit of action. He was in yesterday in game two of the Super Regional. And struggled. So we'll see if that that's helped him. But he's getting the ball early. And he gets the top of the lineup as well as nine guys came to the plate for Arkansas in the first inning. Eric Cole walked, scored the first run of the game. Just one of eight here in the Super Region. And he'll foul that one out of play, one and one. Here's a look at what transpired in that first frame. There was a South Carolina error, and it was a big one. Burke, you've talked about this lineup. There aren't any really weak no. spots. Cook might be the, the weakest, a 250 hitter, but still, he comes up and smashes a base hit his first time. Yeah, and Biggers, again, if the wind's not blowing out, that ball's probably a double off the wall. So, yeah, you, you just have to be razor sharp. Cody Morris was able to navigate through it yesterday. But if you make some mistakes, they will make you pay. A school record, 93 home runs this year. And you've said it a few times, Dave. I mean, it, it's right out of the jump. Eric Cole, leadoff hitter, 13. Martin, second hitter, 13. Kerstad, 314. Mm. Well, they are barreling it up today. Time to get an update. Let's head to the studio. Matt Schick. Now 
Well, that'll be a good one down in Gainesville. Had a really good one yesterday. A little walk-off job. Luke Jarvis, base hit, keeping that series alive. Anytime it goes to a thir third game and you're playing Florida, you got to give the Gators advantage just because the number oh. of arms they can throw at you. Well, that and the experience, too. Casey Martin. Cortez, long run, wow. and that's caught by LT Tolbert. Wow, that was nearly misplayed out there. I don't know what Cortez was was doing so far away from the baseball, but let's go back to the first inning, and this was the big mishap. What looked like a double play ends up being an error on Jonah Bryant, and a run would score. And then with two on, Carson Shaddy does this, a no-doubter. Shaddy's 13th home run of the year. That made it five to nothing, and that's where we stand now. Well, that was a dangerous play and left. Well, Cortez never saw it, and that was the thing. The sun, I mean, you could tell he never moved right away, the left fielder for South Carolina. LT Tolbert thought he was going to catch it once he glanced out there, and Cortez didn't see it, and he took off running, makes an outstanding play, because clearly this is Cortez's ball all the way, but he just never picked it up off the bat. I was hanging out with Carlos in left field before the game today as Heston Kerstad Let that go steps for you. in. Well, I just wanted to go out there because those guys that come in real early, they during BP, they're, they're giving the guys, South Carolina guys, a little uh, a little of the and, business. Yeah. So I said, I'm going to go out there and hang with Carlos just to see what it's like. Did they give you a little business, <laughs> yeah, too? Well, they did. <laughs> they did. I bet you won't go back out no, there again, was will a, you? That was a, a one and only, one and done. One type and done. Thing. Yeah, yeah, I get it. it Notice me and Berkey just, yeah. we hung around the batting cage. Yeah, I <laughs> So I had trying to play in left field in San Francisco or Wrigley. Yikes. I tell you what, you know what? It's just nonstop. I know. I mean, not, they, they don't. start digging into yeah. your family and they get into your book. <laughs> and it, they kind of got you outnumbered, too. Uh, a little bit. 3 0 to Kerstad, and that one is off the plate. So the walk will put him in first and second with one out. Hog Noxious is back, front row, ready to go. Certainly he was uh, front and center yesterday when there were some issues at home plate with the home team thinking the strike zone a little bit small. My man was fired up yesterday in game two, giving the home plate umpire a bunch of business. <laughs> what he says he's walking into the stadium. So long, my minions. Or so Yeah, he was talking to his minions. <laughs> Well, he's 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 must see TV now. He used that pointer finger quite a bit yesterday. Here is Bonfield. He will swing and miss. Here's Mike Morris, home plate umpire yesterday, and boy, he had a little bit of a smaller strike zone than what we're used to seeing. We uh, we had a lot of walks yesterday. Yes, we did. Only two for South Carolina. Amazing. Look at my man. He is comfortable. Goodness. No, that's a good look. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Zoom in on that. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, oh my. <laughs> uh, check swing. I'll check down to first. No swing. Says Casey Mosier. And at this point, if you're South Carolina, you, you, you don't really care how it happens. You're just looking for a zero. Post a zero. Try to halt the momentum the best that you can because here they find themselves in another jam right in the heart of the lineup. And it's clearly up to Lawson. I mean, it's, if South Carolina is going to make a comeback, it's because they hung some zeros. You're right. And it falls on the relief pitchers to do it. Oh, that one scoots away from Taylor. So now they're at second and third. Lawson had his struggles yesterday, only worked two thirds of an inning. Three hits, two earned runs, one walk, one strikeout. Boy, you saw Hunter Taylor back there. It is, I mean, folks, it has been a hot, hot day here in Fayetteville. And you 
see the fans in the stands, and certainly uh, it's a little bit cooler than it was yesterday. We were up around, I don't know, 105, 106 yeah. degrees yesterday with a mid-afternoon start. Yeah. Line out to right field. That may get two in. They'll hold up Kirst at it. Third base, but an RBI single makes it 6 nothing off the bat of Luke Bonfield, his second RBI today. Well, Arkansas continues to hit. Watch the location. Wants it away. It's away a little bit, but still elevated a little bit too much. But a pretty good job. Hands go first. The barrel finds it just the opposite way. A good piece of hit by Luke Bonfield. That's what Arkansas has done all year long. They're the only team in the SEC to hit 300 in the regular season, hit over 300 in conference play as well. So that'll take us to Dominic Fletcher. Skyler Mead out to the mound and more well, usually Berkey we see him in a sprint. This is not a good moment right now for Skyler. No, this is the take as much time as I can to let Rich Chapman get loose down there in that bullpen. I'm guessing that's who that is. Or is that Logan Chapman? It looks like Logan Chapman down there. Hey, for more coverage of the Division I Baseball Super Regionals and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. I don't know if you missed it late last night. A couple of walk-off wins. Washington with a sack fly gets them to their first College World Series. And well, how about what happened in Nashville late into the night? And Mississippi State never say die, Bulldogs. Never seen anything like it. I mean, that, that was one of the most, if not the most impressive Super Regional I've ever seen. I mean, it just back and forth, walk-offs the first two. Two teams just throwing haymakers. Yeah. They, they just, just when you thought the other team had it, the other one would answer back, you know. So it was a beautiful thing. Hate to see somebody lose that one. Gary Henderson, congrats, taking over that team on an interim basis after the first weekend and leads them to the College World Series. I mean, everything about that story for Mississippi State is crazy. Crazy. I mean, it's the first 13 games of the year on the road because they're having construction. Yeah. They get off to a bad start. You get a coaching change, and they're nowhere. I mean, there's nothing going on. And then all of a sudden, you look up, they're in the College World Series. Fletcher. Loops that one out to center. Long run. Catch made by Blair. What a job by Danny Blair. But that will be a sacrifice fly and an RBI. Danny Blair gets a beat on this ball. Just off the end of the bat and reads it perfectly right out of the jump. Does a nice job of getting below the baseball and keeping it off the turf. I love the tumble here at the end. Protect that shoulder. But the Razorbacks add another one. Now up 7-0 here in just the second inning. And the hometown hero right now, Carson Shaddy. Steps to the plate. Four for six in this Super Regional. What I like about this kid, he's kind of been through it all here with his career. You know, just go back two years ago. It's a team that won seven games in conference play arc, so they go seven and 23. Missed postseason play. Only time Dave Van Horn's ever had a losing season in his career. Well, they backed it up last year. They go 45 and 19. They answer back really good in the SEC. And here they are with a shot now. Just one win away from going to Omaha. So he's kind of seen the, the bottom oh, yeah, parts. Yep. And he is just a he's few innings away. He's on the Omaha away. team with Ben Attendee. That's right. Those boys. It's been full spectrum for him. Did not stop. Little stop. check swing. Underhand toss. Lawson will step on the bag, but a couple of more runs come across for Arkansas. It's a 7 nothing game after two. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Super Regionals presented by Capital One Palm Stadium here in Fayetteville, Arkansas, where home team Looking good right now, seven to nothing. 
Carson Shaddy, a big star in this one, but some other stars from the Supers. Berkey, you and I in awe today when we were watching this one. Cody Clemens is putting on a show. He is, and Tennessee Tech kept pitching to him. Today he decided to go oppo. Uh, it was just an incredible display, really, the entire season. If you look at the home runs he's hit, there haven't been many cheap ones in the bunch. And now second in the country in that statistic. Some names to keep an eye on as we head to Omaha. And there is a guy that certainly would love to take that trip, Carson Shaddy. Jacob Olson, first man in for the Gamecocks. Olson, the junior out of Monroe, Georgia. He's hitting eighth in this lineup, a 229 hitter out in the right field. Does have six home runs and 34, excuse me, 10 home runs and 34 runs batted in. Well, Isaiah Campbell is just attacking the strike zone, and why wouldn't you? Up seven to nothing here at the top of the third. He's putting South Carolina on the defense right away. The fastball's been outstanding. Command of it. He's been down at the bottom of the knees. A couple of different breaking balls. Hadn't really seen a change up yet from him. And always nice to go through that lineup one time and maybe save a pitch for the second time through. He went around. Another strikeout for Campbell, his third of the game. Well, what set this up was the pitch before. So you get a fastball right on the outside corner where you back that up with a hard, tight slider. Starts at the same spot, but it just kind of dives right off the outside part. And Jacob Olsen cannot hold his swing. Can't do it much better than that. Retired six straight. Most by an Arkansas pitcher in this series. We have had a ton of base runners. There's the first change up by Campbell. By the way, that three up, three down in the second inning by Campbell was the first three up, three down since the ninth inning of our opening game. But you're used to that at this point, right, Dave? Did yeah. you, you didn't have, would you have two, two the whole regional? Yeah, we had a, uh, a lot of scoring going on <laughs> in Tallahassee. Ground ball. Gates underhand toss to Campbell, and he'll beat Williams to the bag. And that'll be out number two. I tell you, he shows you flashes like this, Ben. We saw it in the semifinals of the SEC tournament against LSU. It, he can make it look easy. Well, the Angels took him in the 24th round. No, I love the body. I love the size. When he's down at the knees coming from the angle, that's what he's going to do. He's going to create a lot of ground balls. And what's been more impressive is the accuracy, the quality strikes he's thrown with that fastball. Danny Blair in the leadoff spot tonight for South Carolina. Steps back in. He grounded out his first time up. And that may drop in, and it will. That is hit number one for the Gamecocks. Well, now you get him in the stretch. Get him in the stretch. Get him uncomfortable a little bit. You got your hottest hitter or one of. Maybe you can get a little two-out lightning here. Carlos Cortez, two-hole hitter, walked his first time up. Cortez with 15 home runs this year. Four hits in this super. Boy, they got the big shift on for him. They have Jax Biggers on the other side of second base. I actually like, I like this version of the shift better because the, the shortstop's on the second base side of the bag, so I think it becomes a much more natural move for him to cover the base. Whereas with Tolbert, he was still on that shortstop side. It's almost contrary to everything you've done as a shortstop your, your whole life when a ball's hit to your backhand side to run to your forehand. It's just kind of get your, it's easy to get your wires crossed there.
Want to be careful here on 2-0 for sure. And that one misses low. It's now 3-0. Madison Stokes on deck. You know he'd love to hit with two on. Green light on 3 0. Mm. And I saw Cortez look into the dugout to Mark Kingston. He just, they're going to play ball the way they've been playing ball. That was ball four right there, though. If you trust anybody to hit 3 0 right now, it's it'd be Cortez or Tolbert, but okay. cost himself a chance at a free one right there. Fouls that one, 3 and 2. Cortez, an anomaly, of course, ambidextrous when it comes to throwing the baseball. Came to South Carolina as an infielder slash outfielder, and when he's in the infield, he will throw right-handed. But he's been strictly an outfielder this year, but when he's in the outfield, he throws with his left hand. You got that? You got that, Ben? I'm hearing you. <laughs> that's pretty athletic. <laughs> it is. Your boy Russell Springer would call that amphibious. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if he can do that. The 3 2 to Cortez. Fouls it to the left side, and that'll get to the seats. Just watching Cortez, he almost he almost doesn't seem conventional left hand hitter. Like he handles the ball up. You know, a lot of lefties yeah. like it kind of down and in, middle in. They can just drop the head on it. But I see him get to a lot of balls kind of up out over the plate with ease. It's a pretty flat path through the zone. High in the air, left center. Did he get enough of it? Just shy of getting one out of here. Fletcher makes the catch up against the wall. It's 7-0 Arkansas. Thank you, Matt. Having a good time in that Arkansas dugout, especially when you're up 7-0. I hope somebody hits a tater. Is that what that was about? Makes sense. Just guessing. You yep. don't know these days. That was quick on your part. <laughs> Not sure what that was, though. <laughs> Here is Jared Gates. Is that that's, Wilson? Yeah, that's Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Wilson. Wilson makes an appearance. Who knew Wilson was an Arkansas fan? Graham Lawson working into his second inning. Jared Gates 0 for 1. That ball's hit pretty hard, but right to Jacob Olson. Out number one. Join ESPN this Tuesday night as Major League Baseball, presented by USAA, showcases the Mets and the Braves from Atlanta. They'll feature Hank Aaron videos during the broadcast, and Hank himself will be in the booth for part of that game. You don't want to miss it. Not a lot of public appearances for Hammer and Hank, so it should be a lot of fun from Atlanta. Coverage starts at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN, also streaming live on the ESPN app. I know I'll be dialed up. That is, was and is my favorite player of all time. Is that right? Hammer and Hank. Gosh, he's just, he was something else. He's all class, too. What a great example. Grant Cook. Six hits for Arkansas. Seven runs have come across. Five in the first, two in the second. We're in the bottom of the third inning. Arkansas's last trip to Omaha was 2015. Called strike three. Good pitch from Lawson. Two down. Yeah, a couple of fastballs to get ahead. This is one of the better breaking balls Lawson's thrown in two days. A really good biter. You can see Cook, once that 
Rear end kind of goes towards the dugout a little bit. It is over. Kind of jelly legs him. Here's Jax Biggers. Hit it on the button his first time, but right to Jacob Olson in right field. Yes, he did. Oh. Mm. Now they love him. They didn't love him yesterday because no. he had a hard time getting that right hand up. He don't like calling strikes. I would have liked to see the reaction there if he didn't call that <laughs> strike. Again, Biggers hits it on the button. But Jacob Olson there to make the catch. First time since the first inning of game one, Arkansas did not have a base runner. Three, four, and five coming up for the Gamecocks. As so we move to the top of the fourth inning in a seven to nothing game. Guys, we were just talking about Isaiah Campbell and the fact that, uh, you know, he is a guy that was picked up in the draft, not highly drafted, but a big guy that shows a, a lot of promise as that one is slicing toward the seats. And certainly when you can get a guy of his stature at the 24th round, 721st pick in the draft, I mean, first two, two questions. Do you, if you're him at 24, do you stay in Arkansas? Do you go? But, I, I mean, it's almost a steal if he decides to go, right? I no, mean, I think it is a steal. I mean, it's an easy low 90s fastball. Look how smooth he just delivers. I mean, it's nice and smooth. and comes out of the hand easy. And, yeah, I mean, it's a big decision for him. You know, remember, he didn't get to pitch a whole lot last year. Had a minor elbow issue, a few bone spurs removed, nothing yeah. serious. So really not a lot of experience, but I tell you what, I like the body. I think the breaking stuff, you know, to get to the next level and be consistent, it's got to get a little bit better, and I think it will. But he certainly projects out as, as a plus arm for sure, probably three years down the road. Fletcher makes the catch in center on Stokes, and it just begs the question. I mean, obviously you think about the college game and, and where it is and being in this environment. You come back, you get to be a main cog right. in this Arkansas rotation. A lot to think about for him. Yeah, he's got a couple years of eligibility left. Yeah. So you wonder, did he did he slide because of signability issues? But I'm not a pro scout, but that, that ain't no 24th rounder. I'm going to tell you that right now. Well, and that's what happens a lot now. We, we see where guys are drafted, but that's not saying what their talent level is because you don't know what their number is. That's right. the difference now with the draft is all these draft eligible sophomores yeah. and juniors, they put a number on themselves, you know, and if they get that number, they, they normally leave. But if they don't get that number, you see them fall way down in the draft. Somebody just kind of gives them a courtesy draft, and I think that's probably what happened with him. Here's Jonah Bride. One and one on the Gamecock third baseman. Base hit in the left center. Second hit of the game for the Gamecocks. And Jonah Bride is on with one out. That'll get us to Justin Rowe, struck out looking to start the second inning. Talking about Justin and the kind of year he has had. Came in 349 on the year. Three for eight in this Super Regional versus Arkansas. It was now eight out of 20 at the plate. Hitting 444 in the NCAA tournaments. I mean, no matter what the stage is, this yeah. guy's swinging it. He's there. He and has been a rock. And went undrafted. How about that? You get him a job yet? <laughs> well, we've been working on it. Yeah, he deserves a job. You don't hit what he hit at this level. 349, seven homers. Yeah, you, you, you can play pro ball. I mean, there ain't no doubt about that. There's a strike. Two and one now. Jonathan India put one on the board early for the Gators. one nothing Gators early on. You need your stars to show up in the big games. 
Certainly has happened so far for the Razorbacks. Shaddy and Bonfield driving in runs. That ball's hit pretty well. Left center long run for Kerstad and Fletcher, and Kerstad can't make a play. Jonah Bride trying to get to third. Here's the throw, and he'll slide in safely. Nobody wanted Justin Rowe. I tell you what, th that ball smoked, and Kerstad, who we've noticed can really run in left field, closed on this ball, Ben. He got to where he had a chance to make this play. As we see Rowe do a nice job of staying behind the ball and getting the barrel out in front. And Kerstad does everything but finish it off. And we know this time of day, boy, it is a nasty sun out in left field. I was impressed with the range that even got him to the ball, but a missed opportunity to not finish the play. Yeah, he got a wonderful jump on that ball. I thought it was going to get down, and he easily closed mm -hmm. on it and almost overran it to some degree. Well, that's what the guys are looking at on the left side of the uh, field as LT Tolbert will stand in with two on. He looks at a first pitch changeup. Three for nine, couple of home runs in the Super Regional. One of those a grand slam. I think South Carolina just needs something on the board. Oh, it's still a early big at bat. There is no doubt about it. And the right guy to have up in this at bat. Yep. In his foot. Well, they, uh, they're going to say nobody said dead ball. Wow. Two runs are going to score. Wow. Justin Rowe comes around from second to score. I thought that ball hit his foot. Now, I may be wrong. It even sounded. It even sounded like, and Cook, Grant Cook is making the argument to catch it for Arkansas. He's like, the ball hit the foot. Because Grant Cook sold it well if he did, because he never even moved to go get no, the baseball. That's right. Well, we have a chance to look at the replay, but this is not a reviewable play. It looked like Billy Hayes came out pointing, Ben. Well, the question I got, did he Looks swing like at it? it. Well, because if he swung at it, it can hit him anyway, right? Yes, but... And so the ball would then be live. I don't know. What does what Billy Hayes... Keep it running. Billy Hayes comes out and, and starts pointing. Is he pointing at the ball hit the dirt? And I'll tell you well, what. It looks like it hits the back of his foot, but Tolbert doesn't budge. Yep. Third base umpire is saying he went. Third base umpire is saying he went. So the ball's live anyway. That's what I'm saying. Right. So it's the right call anyway, because if he swung at it, and the third base umpire said he swung at it, then you play it live, don't That's you? That's right. Now the umpires will get together and discuss this. Again, there is replay in the Super Regionals, but a little different for those of you that followed SEC baseball where there were some ex experimental plays that were being reviewed. The system will set up a little differently in the Supers where there is a control center that will have a couple of umpires that will look at the replays. They will relay their decision to our umpires here in Fayetteville, but that is not a reviewable play under this current system, better known as permanent reviewable plays. So it just has to be a discussion by our group of four there with the NCAA hats. Well, I don't think I don't think anybody's going to overturn the, the hit by pitch. And like Ben saying, he looked like he swung. Third base umpire Mike Morris said he swung, so then the ball would be live. Let me ask this question though: It's a scoring play, mm. and all scoring plays at home plate, inclusive of incl collisions, can be reviewed. So I'm. I'm just would, would, would this fall would, under that, or exactly. is that all about tag plays or force plays right. at the plate? They're going to score them. Now I'm kind of reaching. Yeah. Oh, no, I hear you. So despite that runs came across, it is not a reviewable play because the issue at hand was whether or not it hit him. 
Dave Van Horn not happy at all about this. No, Hob Noxus is not happy. Hog Noxus, no. Hog Noxus is not happy. He's got something for the umpires always. That changes the dynamic of this a yeah, little bit. Yeah, you got your two runs across. You didn't even need a knock. And I, I just, like you said, Ben, if he swung, it doesn't matter. That We really got no confirmation on what exactly they called. Did they put a strike on they the board? They put a strike on the scoreboard. Okay, so they are count. saying he swung. Okay. There he goes again. There's that man again. <laughs> so they're calling it a strike. 0-2 oh on LT Tolbert. Well, that was an interesting sequence. Hey, if you're South Carolina, you'll take him any way you can get him right now. Oh, yeah. Just chip it away, right? I mean, now, now it's back you just to five. Need a, yeah, you just need back a little momentum. Five, yeah. Well, we'll get an update from that Auburn-Florida game in a moment. LT Tolbert trying to keep this at bat alive. It's one and two. Did he go? No swing. Down the line and left. Kirsten had, had trouble finding it. It drops. He had no idea where that ball was. So that's the last two doubles for South Carolina, both, both influenced by the sun. Kirsten never sees it initially. Biggers gets a great jump, but it's way too far for him to get there by the time Kirsten picks it up. I don't know if he'd have got there anyway, Ben. That ball's right on the yeah. paint just inside the foul line. And South Carolina got some things going in their favor in this inning. Yeah, this one you got to calm your starting pitcher down because really he could be out of the inning with a zero right now. You know, plays made a sliding play out toward left center field, but the sun has certainly been a big factor in his comeback so far for South Carolina. Let's get a quick update. Head to the studio. Matt, what's going on? Well, the Gators trying to head back to Omaha, defend that championship off to a good start at home against Auburn. Number 20 for Jonathan India. The Gators have been just about unbeatable in the Super Regionals. Auburn trying to get to Omaha for the first time since 1997, where Tim Hudson led them there. Uh, everybody was all smiles in that Arkansas dugout till that last sequence where a wild pitch plated two runs and then Tolbert doubles. And now here comes Hunter Taylor, the senior catcher. And he will look at ball one. Keep coming, Zay. Keep coming. Lowski, who is one of their better arms in that bullpen, heading down. To get loose as quickly as he can. Yeah, he had a little action in game one of the Super Regional. Boy, now it's 2-0. and And this, this is sometimes the issue with Campbell. That sometimes once it spins, it gets spinning real fast. Taylor on the year. Nine home runs, 34 runs batted in. Popped it up. Will it stay in play? 
Cook throws the mask away, but it drops a few rows back. 20 pitches this inning now for Isaiah Campbell. He is up to 66 here at the top of the fourth. Yeah, a lot of his inconsistencies come out of the stretch, if you notice. When, you, when he stays in the windup, it just seems to all gather and catch up and the fastball's down. It's like he can sink it up better. A lot of guys was a little bit like that, too. You put him in the stretch a little bit and things aren't quite the same. All of a sudden, the fastball begins to get a little elevated. It normally happens, you know, when you're trying to be quick to home plate, you got to run at first base. You can run a little bit. It makes you speed up a little bit. And anytime a pitcher speeds up, when you miss, you start missing up in the zone just because it doesn't all catch up. Foul ball. We'll do it again. Two and two. So you look how bright it is in the outfield, and you think about a first-year player, Kerstad, having to deal with that, right? And you got Eric Cole, a junior in right field. He doesn't even need sunglasses on. Sometimes you wonder if the wind blows out to left, the wind blows into right. It almost seems like you could flip-flop the two of them, yeah. maybe give Kerstad a little bit of a break. Man, that is a tough assignment to ask a freshman to play in those conditions. Two and two on Taylor. Yes, he went. Strikeout. Well, Isaiah Campbell makes a big pitch when he needs to. A couple of fastballs to get back in the count and watch this slider. This is the one he's going to. This is the breaking ball. The hard, tight slider starts on the outside corner, and it disappears right there at the end. And Hunter Taylor could not hold his swing. Second out of the inning, and that'll get us to Jacob Olson, the right fielder who's got some pop in the bat. <laughs> All obnoxious is in fine form tonight. I thought he was solid yesterday. Yeah, well, I think he saw his highlights, and so right. he's, he stepped he's it raising up. his game. Yep. Got a camera following him around, pregame tailgate stuff. By the way, yeah. it looked like a football tailgate out oh, here today. Of course, they know how to do it here. Three hits this inning for South Carolina. <laughs> He's got some buddies with him yeah, today. Yeah, he got the crew. <laughs> Boy's a little feisty today. He's trying to call time. He said he wants time. <laughs> Cook behind the plate doing his job. Yeah, one of the best defenders in the country. That's why the Pittsburgh Pirates drafted him in the fifth round. Fouled out of play. One and two now. Campbell has responded nicely. It looked a little shaky there right after the two runs scored, but here he is just one pitch away from getting out of it. You know what's great? If this was over in Columbia, South Carolina, the same stuff would be going oh, on. Absolutely. There'd be 9,000 <laughs> on hand doing the same things. Woo. 
I mean, these are two great college baseball yes, fan bases yeah. who love this game. Two oh. incredible facilities. Top five in the program in the country. Both of these programs. When it comes to attendance figures. These teams meeting for the seventh time this year. <laughs> Inning is over. 7-2 Arkansas. The Gamecocks inching their way back in there. The wild pitch leads to a couple runs. And you know the home crowd doesn't like it. Hulk nauseous. He is none too pleased. Dave Van Horn just kind of calming his bunch saying, hey, we're okay. We're still up five. And Eric Cole coming to the plate for the third time this game. The leadoff man, and then Casey Martin and Heston Kerstad. Boy, during the inning, these fans were all over our, mm -hmm. our umpires. You guys talked about it yesterday, and those of you that were uh, with us saw a lot of it. If you weren't, the strike zone by, at the time, Mike Morris was small. It was almost a major league strike zone. But you guys commented a couple times saying that he was consistent with it throughout. Now, you may have thought it was a strike, but that ball slides through Matt Williams. And there goes Cole. He'll wind up with a double. His second hit tonight. Here they go again. It just, the top of the order is just so difficult to pitch to. Fastball down and in. Cole turns on it, and he can really run. It's just, it, it's one of the most talented position groups in the country, folks. They got power and speed. They don't steal a ton of bases, but there's a lot of athleticism on this Razorback roster. Well, we knew it was only a matter of time before Cole got it going. He was struggling here in this super, but now he's reached base three times, including two hits. And now Casey Martin will get the free pass as he takes one in the shoulder. Boy, just when South Carolina makes a little bit of noise, they get a little bit of momentum. They put up two in the top of the fourth inning. All of a sudden, you get a leadoff double, a hit by pitch, and here come the Hogs again. This week's Wednesday Night Baseball presented by Hankook Tire features two of the top teams in baseball. It's the Nationals and the Yankees as they wrap up their two-game set. Coverage starts 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. And of course, you can always catch that on the ESPN app. Logan Chapman. He's been throwing now for a yeah. couple of innings. Down in that bullpen. That's Graham Lawson. Will await Skyler Mead, and usually when we see this type of delay, it means there's a pitching change on the horizon. Mm -hmm. So Chapman coming in to replace Graham Lawson. He'll get the baseball. His team down five. We'll update the change on the other side. Square it off beginning next weekend to see who will pick up that trophy. And can anybody knock off the Florida Gators? Tell you what, Oregon State boys looking really good right now. Yep. Here's our new pitcher. He's a freshman, Logan Chapman. Freshman out of Liberty, South Carolina. 6'1", 190, making his 16th appearance. Some control issues, but his stuff can be lively. No, his fastball's a good one. It's up to 94. You may even see the 95 at him, but he'll sit in the low 90s. and Love the strikeouts for innings pitched. 
for Chapman. This will be his third appearance against Arkansas and giving up 10 hits and five and a third and eight runs. Yeah, he look, he he was the number one guy for a while. Not because he was their best, right. but they were throwing him number one. It started right here when they played Arkansas early in the season. And they kind of rode that out just because they, they beat Arkansas and they were having some success. But it's been a struggle here of late for him. Aston Kerstad with two on. Kerstad 0 for 1. 3 for 10 here in the Super Regional. Does have a home run. Hit it out in left center yesterday. And I thought it was impressive because he fouled a ball off his kneecap. And the very next pitch is when he hit the home run. Perky, I think you, you, you said dude points oh, yeah, that's right dude there. points yeah. now. You wear one off the kneecap and then go left central. <laughs> you, you earn yourself some cred. Make that knee feel a little bit better, although he was still limping a little bit <laughs> getting was. around second base. He had a little hitch in the giddy up. Well, here's what happened. This is the foul ball. I mean, it is directly off the kneecap. And he hopped around for a few seconds, got back in there, and then boom. Yeah, I was impressed initially that he didn't go down, because that's usually the ball that'll take your feet right yeah. out from under you. And then he went launch piece, and I thought, well, he's just gone to a whole new level of dude. This is an impressive young man, just a freshman. Already looks like a big leaguer. Yeah, those are the kind of bodies you normally don't see show up on campus. A little bit of a late bloomer. And that will draw the walk on four pitches. So now they are loaded. Here is Luke Bonfield. Couple of singles, his first two times to the plate. Picked up RBIs in both of those sequences. And now we'll have the bases loaded. Bonfield one for six with an RBI with the bases loaded this year. They put on their special bases loaded hat. You'll see fans all around the stadium with these, these hats on. There's a few different versions of them. They only pull them out when the bases are juiced. Did, did they pull them out when LT Tolbert went yard no. yesterday? <laughs> only for the home, boys. <laughs> Look at our base runners. Eric Cole, who doubled, stands at third. Casey Martin was hit by a pitch, and Kerstad walked a moment ago. You better be careful right here. Nowhere to put him. A hitter who's obviously locked in a couple rockets in this ball game already. And you find yourself in a predictable count. Ninety one, ninety two miles an hour and fouled out of play. Eddie Demarius is up again. Yeah, I can't save anybody at this point. I mean, you've got to find somebody that can hang some zeros. A little late on that fastball, 93 miles an hour. We talked about Justin Rowe not having a job in professional baseball. It's pretty hard to believe Luke Bonfield can have the career he's had here for Dave Van Horn hit fourth in this lineup because he's a professional hitter. Now, there's some question marks on where he plays in the field, but, man, this is one polished hitter. There's a reason why Dave Van Horn trusts him in the cleanup spot. You can see it already in this ballgame. A couple really big knocks. Got a chance to really impact the game here. That one's up and away, two and two. Really does a nice job of letting the ball travel. You almost never see him out in front or antsy. He 
Yeah, so how do you get him out here? I mean, the way you get him out, for me, the latest he's been is you you got to throw the two-seamer yes. in. I mean, it's got to be in the inner third. I think you'll get him, and you may even create a ground ball double play. Going low and away, and Taylor has to make a nice play behind the dish. Because when you see a guy like that, the late, he's late on a 1-0 heater. He's late on a 2-1 heater. Two backside hits already. Two backside hits already. It tells you one thing. I mean, he likes to see it deep. Yeah. yeah. How do you offset that? Well, good fastball inside. And you see him, he's not even really budging at the breaking balls. Well, does he get the heater right here on 3-2? I mean, he should. But it's got to be in, I think, because he may have sped the bat up just enough. You throw him away, and he may hit another rocket right down the, the right field line. That was 93, and there he was trying to get it down that right field line, Ben. So, so Chapman's got plenty of arm. Mm -hmm. He has got plenty of arm to come inside. The question is, is he comfortable to throw a strike there? Playing high school baseball last year. Now he's in this environment. Mm -hmm. so this is why you come to South Carolina, to pitch in a moment like this. go inside that's out to center field Blair will make the catch shy of the track but that'll be good enough to get a run home and Eric Cole will make it eight to two Arkansas let's get a Tiger and Gator update let's go to Matt Schick Stephen Williams. Yeah, uh, we, we talk about Martin and Kerstad. They got two at Auburn. Yeah. Stephen Williams and Edward Julian. And just every, two yeah. monster freshmen. And everybody has slept on that Auburn offense all year long. We talk a lot about, you know, Kentucky's offense and Arkansas's offense. Of course, Florida's offense is Irving so. But the number one offense in the SEC when it comes to scoring runs per game, the Auburn Tigers. Well, they'll need them as many as they can get against Florida. That's a long way from being over down in Gainesville. Here is Dominic Fletcher, and he pops it straight up in the air. LT Tolbert makes the catch, and everybody has to stay at their respective bases. First pitch. Fletcher just doesn't quite look comfortable in this series. You just haven't seen him on much. Yeah, man, hadn't got a base hit yet. He did drive in a run his last time up. This guy here knows how to drive him in, though. He looks comfortable. I'd say a launch piece in his first day beat that ball was way out into the left field seats Mom and dad are all fired up. He's fired up It's almost like South Carolina has just not been able to make pitches to him and That's if you right. look at the balls that he has hit Everything has been up out over the plate, but give him credit. He has not missed them Seems like every time you look up he's in a plus count. It's 1 0 2 0 3 1 with dudes on base. That's right and then, you know, seeing it good, he's, he's taking those marginal pitches, not fishing at them, and he's working the count to his favor. Then he's getting some mistakes, and he's finding the barrel consistently. Nine RBIs so far for Shaddy in this Super Regional. He'll look at strike one. Isaiah Campbell with a six-run lead. How about Shaddy this year against South Carolina? He's now 7 for 16, four home runs, and 13 RBIs. And when you're hot, it just seems to go like this. You're always ahead in the count. There's people always on base. It seems like you're always getting the pitcher from the stretch, who's not real comfortable with what he's trying to do to you, and it just snowballs. Ooh. Well, this would be something to only give up one run in this situation for this youngster, Logan Chapman. Yeah, I mean, he had bases loaded, nobody out. 
certainly keep the Gamecocks there within striking distance. That's a good breaking ball right yep. there. That one had a little tilt to it at 85 miles an hour. And it's down. I mean, that's the key. Yeah. It is down. Shaddy now hitting 341. They got Martin at 342, Kirstad at 342, Shaddy at 341, Cole at 327, Bonfield at 305. That's some crazy numbers yeah. right there. And Biggers hit ninth at, at 290, has hit maybe two of the hardest balls of the, of the night. Swing and a miss, inning over. Logan Chapman does his job. Arkansas will pick up another run, though. It's an 8-2 ball game after four. Back at Bomb Stadium, Arkansas up 8-2 over South Carolina. The big right-hander for Arkansas has been on point so far today. He's been dotting that outside corner with a plus fastball. The four-seamer's working. We're going to show you a little cut fastball, a slider as well to get a, a strikeout, too. And he is wearing out. He's dotting eyes and crossing T-boys on that outside corner. Four innings, five Ks, one walk. Those two earned runs he gave up, of course, was only a ball that looked like it hit the foot, but it was a swing, so the ball was live. Two runs scored, one from second base. Eight-two ball game. Matt Williams, the nine-hole hitter, will step in. Williams out at first base this evening. 0 for 3 in the Super Regional. Average at 217. He just looks like he should be a better hitter. I, I, it's hard for me to see a 217. I'm not saying he's a 350 hitter or something. But right. He looks comfortable in there. I mean, what if you had to look at it and kind of critique it, Berkey, why hasn't he had more hits? He cuts a lot of balls. You notice okay. a lot of the foul balls, the barrels, just a little bit cutting across the bottom of the baseball. Doesn't quite get through the front side of the plane of the ball. And, if you, every time I watch him, it, it's a lot of foul balls. Yeah. As you said, it seems to be on time, seems to look comfortable, but just not getting the barrel to the back of the ball enough. And, you know, you only get a couple chances per A-B. It's not like you get four or five cranks at it. And so if you miss a couple of those on foul balls, it's tough. There's a strike three and one. There is a short leash right now with Isaiah Campbell. You saw all those guys running out to that Arkansas bullpen. And there's some guys down there that's available. You know, Cronin, we've not seen the closer, the left-hander for Arkansas. He's not even pitched yet in this series, so you think he could give you two or three. So a leadoff walk to a guy hitting 217, not exactly what Dave Van Horn was looking for. Well, I've always said the, the first batter of every inning is where a pitcher needs to have the, the most concentration because you get the first batter of every inning, the chance of the team scoring goes way down from there. And I think a lot of pitchers, and I'm not saying that Campbell did that, but a lot of pitchers don't take those warm-up pitches seriously. Those last three pitches, you want to attack and you want to throw whatever pitch you're going to throw that last one with the same intensity in your warm-up that you're going to start the next batter off with because you mechanically you want to make sure you're where you need to be. And there is Cronin. And we talked to Wes Johnson yesterday, pitching coach at Arkansas. I was like, hey, is, is Cronin like a nine-out guy? And he looked at me like I was crazy for even asking the question. Like, oh, yeah, he is. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised here in another inning or two if we don't see him yeah. kind of try to close this thing out. I think you're going to see Lowski first. I mean, right. he's really good. and He's got some left in the tank. He pitched in, in game one of this series. But there's no doubt that the left-hander will be on the mound toward the end of this ballgame. So Dave Van Horn out to make this change, even the crowd feeling it. But did you, did you get what you wanted out of Campbell? 
No, not really. I, I, I really thought he had five innings for sure. You know, that's where I wanted to get him is through five. Eh. And I'm not sure he's out of the game yet. I don't, I don't know. I don't think Van Horn comes out unless there's a change. That's what I would think. He had about 80 pitches, but that's it. So, Ben, Campbell leaves with an 8-2 lead. The big fella, 24th round selection, putting his arm on display. Isaiah Campbell, four plus, five strikeouts, couple of walks, responsible for Matt Williams over at first base. And he will turn this one over to a guy that's been on lockdown lately, Barrett Lowski, 279 ERA for the right hander. And on game one, three innings pitch, four strikeouts. And, guys, we, we talked to Wes Johnson about him, too, because he's not a guy that throws 95. Yeah. And, Berka, you were talking about, like, as a hitter, you, 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 you're at the plate thinking, I should be killing this guy. Oh, it, it's, it is one of the truest fastballs that you will see. That's why the Yankees drafted him, because they're, the ball does not take a traditional plane. What you will see is consistently hitters under the baseball. He does not beat you with velocity. He beats you with deception. And it's pretty wild to watch. Yeah. It's 88 to 90, but a bunch of swings and misses on the fastball. Now the question is, can he bounce back after 50 pitches just two days ago? First heater at 85 miles an hour make you wonder, Ben. Yeah. But, I mean, that's what we saw him the other day, 87 to 90, a little bit down. But he's definitely got something a little special. Danny Blair, the leadoff man, steps in with nobody out, one on. And he will look at a strike one, two and one now. Wes Johnson said the Yankees are so fired up to get Barrett Lowski because his track man numbers are so special. The baseball just does not react the way that hitters are used to seeing it react. And because of that, he gets a ton of swing throughs. And who, who kind of had that in the big league level that you would see? Like, Oh, man, I, I faced a guy named Rick Helling that used to drive me crazy. And you'd think you were swinging good, then you'd swing and miss three times at him. You kept looking at the scoreboard and seeing 87, 88, right. and he just – you couldn't figure it out. I'm glad we now have this track man because it starts to explain some of the mysterious, what we used to call invisible. So back-to-back -back walks now, and South Carolina with an opportunity with nobody out, and you've got the heart of your lineup coming up, starting with Carlos Cortez, who has walked and flew out to center field. Boy, two different outings for this Arkansas bullpen this weekend. In game one, they're really good. Game two, not so much. Six walks by the guys out of that bullpen. Yeah, the, the script was kind of flipped. I mean, it was South Carolina in game one, a lot of free passes, double-digit free passes with the walks and hit by pitches, but it was Arkansas yesterday. We're going to get a mound visit from Wes Johnson. Now, the book on how to hit these guys with high spin rate, no Z break to get yeah. real technical on you, is you got to pull the baseball. you got to try to get the head out because the deeper you catch it, the harder it is to square it up. But I think right now, Ben, we're maybe seeing a pitcher maybe not feeling it. Wes Johnson, he, he he's being very blunt. Are you okay? Yeah. And that was a pretty short one there. That need, hey, I need you to be in the strike zone. We're up six runs. I want to see strike one, not ball one. Let your stuff work. Ben, I hadn't seen a whole lot of meetings like that mm -hmm. one. <laughs> That's right up in your face, nice <laughs> yeah. and close. Are you okay? <laughs> yes. Then start throwing strikes. Because that's the one thing that can put South Carolina right back in this ballgame is free passes. And you know about South Carolina's offense. You talk a lot about the home runs of Arkansas, but South Carolina's 77 long ones of their own. Cortez. 
Down the line and left. Martin backpedals, makes the catch. That'll be the first out of the inning, and Cortez not happy with that at bat. No, he shouldn't be. I mean, he swings at a 3-0 ball that was down his last at bat, and he gets a 1-0 count. The ball is even marginal from being a strike, and yet he goes at it. When a pitcher's struggling with command, I mean, you know this. I mean, you you got a key holder. I mean, you're up in the count, fastball count. You're looking for something middle, middle to turn around, and Cortez just a little bit too anxious. Now it's Madison Stokes, the three-hole hitter. 0 for 2, couple of flyouts. And if you read Mark Kingston, if you read Mark Kingston's lips right there, he was saying he's a strike thrower, he's a strike thrower. What I love about that is even though he came in not throwing strikes, history says he is a strike thrower. So he wants his best hitters mm -hmm. ready to swing the bat. Now, as you said, Ben, Cortez swung at a pretty marginal pitch, so you, you got to trust them to make good decisions. But what you don't want is passive approaches where you end up missing opportunities to drive okay. in runs. But that's what separates guys that hit for a high average and guys that don't. I mean, we watch Cortez, you see the swing, and you go, it's a 300 stroke all day long. But at the end of the day, you look at what he's hitting, he's hitting 260 something. And I think for me, for him, that's the reason why he's hitting 260 something, is he sometimes a little bit too aggressive on some balls where he doesn't need to be. I like the aggression. But he's got to be a little bit more selective in certain situations. 0-2 oh, on Stokes. Second out of the inning. I don't know what Wes Johnson told Barrett Lowski, but whatever he told him, it is working. Velo's up about two miles per hour, so you get a heater down and away, just dotting the eye for strike two, and watch him change the eye level up and in and a swing through and a couple of really big pitches by Barrett Lowski. If you want to know how out of the ordinary his stuff is, just watch that last swing. Madison Stokes does not take swings like that. That ball almost hit him mm -hmm. in the chin. And again, we know the ball's not rising, but there's something that ball's doing that's so out of the ordinary that makes a quality hitter chase a pitch that looks that bad. Yeah, it's it's very strange, you know. But but if it's, if the stuff is that special, why is it seventeenth round special? You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's like you know, it plays. Maybe it plays here at this level. You know, I don't know if it's going to play at the next mm -hmm. level. You'll find out. Well, there's, there's not much of a breaking ball. The body's not your traditional big league reliever. So you can see why people aren't, you know, beating down his door. But, again, you look at, at some of the swings, and you really don't need the radar gun. The mm -mm. swings tell you. He's definitely one of those guys that can pitch. You know, and he knows. I mean, that's, that's one thing a pitcher can use to your advantage. When I know I got a high spin rate or my ball does a little bit different, stays on plane, that gives me the confidence to know that I'm not afraid to throw when I'm in plus counts or heater counts. I'm not afraid to throw my fastball in those type of counts. Why? Because I know it's something a little special to it. To 1-1 one, one to Bride. Foul back. It's 1-2 and two now. Well, well, and what Wes Johnson told us that I thought was fascinating is he's had to relearn what a quality pitch is for him because what do you learn your whole life? Down, down, right. down. Pitch. When you're the high spin rate guy and the no Z break guy, he wants you to pitch up, which goes against everything you've been taught for the better part of your life. And that's where that new information comes in and, and how do you use it? And so he wants to be at the top of the strike zone and then they want to be above that when he gets ahead. Little blooper, is he going to get in there? Long run for Cole, makes the catch, and the inning is over. 8-2, our score. Gates, Cook, and Biggers coming up. Before we go to break, let's go to Matt Schick with an update. Heading to the bottom of the fifth inning in a game three of this Fayetteville Super Regional. Winner heading to Omaha. Going to join the party next week. Jared Gates will lead things off for Arkansas. Seven, eight, nine coming up. 
Gates 0 for 2 today. Old school look. No gloves. No body armor. No eye black. No TV tape. He's just up no, there to hit. Old school. Just give me a bat. We were laughing yesterday around the cage. Everybody else got all their gear on and stuff, and he's just there with his bat. <laughs> Looks kind of funny. Got <laughs> just <Yeah>. bad. <laughs> I mean, there's a guy right there. And Grant Cook, you know, he's got the gear. Body armor, the gloves, the TV tape. There you go. He, we even got a splint wrapped for <laughs> Jax Biggers. Although I think he'd be very happy to get rid of that. Mm. Yes, that, that's not by choice. I don't know. He may, the way he's hitting, y'all, yeah, no, yeah. even when it gets well, yeah, baby, he, might he, he may just keep wrapping it. <laughs> The, the, the swag captain on that club is, is Martin. He's got a little bit of everything going. Gates told me that he did try some gloves. Like his freshman year for maybe a day or two. Couldn't remember, but it wasn't very long. So it just didn't feel right. There is Casey Martin. No eye black today. No, but the wrists are taped up. Yeah. Got the sock on the throwing arm. Bracelet or two on the left arm. Gates pops it up. That'll get to the seats. Tell you what, he keeps playing like he's playing. He can wear whatever he wants to wear. Oh, right? yeah. Wow. Now, there's some serious eye black game yeah. from Carlos Cortez. He went thick. You know, so you see some guys go thin. He goes thick. Well, you run around there in left field with that son about an hour ago. You need all you can get. Popped him up, and let's see if that stays in play. Taylor drops the mask, but he'll watch it hit the roof here. I, I, I only tried eye black once, and then it ended up all over my uniform, so I'm not really mm -hmm. sure. But does that really work? Like, is there science behind that? I mean, what, like, does that really help your eyes yeah, with the I glare of the sun? it stops the reflection, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because it looks cool. There's no doubt about that. So I don't know that the players really yeah, care. I don't know if that much eye black is going to. Right. Okay. <laughs> I just couldn't stay off of it. You know what I mean? I don't know how they do it. Oh, that hit Gates on a 3-2 pitch. See, might go to the body armor next game. Who knows? Be sure to join ESP in this Tuesday night as Major League Baseball presented by USAA showcases the Mets and the Braves from Atlanta. They'll feature Hank Aaron videos during the broadcast, and Hank himself will be in the booth for part of the game. Coverage starts at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN, also streaming live on the ESPN app. Anytime you can catch Hank Aaron talking some baseball, you need to do it. No doubt. 755 home runs. Berkey, I'm going to get you one of those on the way out of town. Really? Okay. Just because you've just been you've been that pleasant to be around this weekend. <laughs> well, I think you got a little extra cash. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Grant Cook. Longtime coach here, Norm DeBryan, came by the booth earlier this week, talked to us about the, the hog hat. Yeah. Said he gave one to your old coach, Skip Bertman. Yeah, when he, the year he was retiring, that's what they gave him as a gift here. I don't think he liked it a whole lot <laughs> from what we heard. Didn't he use it to step on it as a pregame? He, he, got, it, he, yeah, he got his team <laughs> fired up. Something along the lines he told us, and this is what they give me after five national titles, and he stomped on it in front of everybody and got his team fired up. Oh, you got to give me the you got to yep. give me the voice there. Don't do not do it in your voice. Do it in his voice. <laughs> so, he, <laughs> so uh, listen, so, you know, I got five titles in the come home, you know, last series here in Fayetteville. Look what they give me. <laughs> then he, he put that big club foot on and he stomped it. Uh, <laughs> much better story that yeah, way. No doubt. Uh, oh, he was a motivator now. You do what you can to get their head right, right? That's right. Logan Chapman on the mound right now. 2-0 and oh to Grant Cook. Tell you what, it's getting the part of the game now where Things get a little dicey. I think, you know, in the second inning when it's 7-0 for South Carolina, you're kind of thinking, you know, with these bats, you 
plenty of opportunities, but those opportunities yeah. are getting smaller and smaller for this Gamecock team as Skyler Mead out to the mound again. Yeah, because you know what's waiting down there for you in that bullpen, right. you know, and you, and you got a guy in Cronin who's been one of the best in the business this year, and he's fresh. He's not pitched at all in this series. So you, you want to make hay when you can. And they've missed some opportunities to do so. So that'll do it for Logan Chapman. Here comes Eddie Demirius. He will enter the game from the right field bullpen. And he'll come in with a 2-0 count. We'll update the change on the other side. Thank you, Matt. Boy, how about that in a Super Regional Game 3? Stealing home. Kevin O'Sullivan doing all he can to get his team to another College World Series, fourth straight TCU streak ended this year. Mm -hmm. Well, those are the type of plays you work on all the time in practice, preseason, sometimes during the midweek, and then you never know when it might pay off. How about a game three of a super? Eddie Demirius coming into the ball game, the right-hander. We saw those numbers. 4-7-3 ERA, a 7-1 record. This is his 31st appearance of the year. He's thrown 64 innings. Yeah. And he's only started one game. Yeah, he has chewed up some innings out of that Gamecock bullpen this year. Demirius started his career down at Florida, transferred to Miami Dade College, and now is here at South Carolina. A junior out of Miami, Florida. Grant Cook, three and one on him at the plate, and he'll draw a walk. So you walk a guy hitting 250 to get to Jack Biggers with nobody out and two on. And Biggers hadn't missed the barrel yet today. It, it looks like 0 for 2, but it's been two BBs to right field. got to stay away to Biggers. He just the barrel is too quick. The path is too short to the ball. If anything, it works a little across the zone. So the, the place to go is away. You run one middle, middle in, and you're asking for it right now with Biggers. They're trying to. They're trying mm -hmm. to. You see Hunter Taylor set up out there. They're trying to get that 4-6-3, hoping he rolls over one. 4-6-3 double play. Boy, South Carolina, too many free passes in game one of this series. You know, you, you put eight on, you hit two more, ten free passes. Last night it was Arkansas that did the same thing. So that's a common thread. Throwing strikes. Yeah, really been the defining pattern of the series to this point. Obviously, South Carolina still has some swings, still has some turns at bat, but the free passes have really cost the losing teams in the first two games. Four walks and a couple of hit batters by South Carolina here tonight. And now it's a 3-1 count. And the lineup will flip after Biggers. Watch out. Mr. Eric Cole, who has walked and scored, singled and scored, doubled and scored. And here come the bases loaded hats. They're going to go 
check on Mr. Demurius. During this series, South Carolina pitching has walked 17 Razorbacks. They've hit five batters. They throw in the five errors, and this has not been South Carolina baseball. Brainerd Cooper out there. Her associate athletic trainer. Talking to Murius, and that'll do it for Eddie. They're going to take him out of the game. Something just not right. So a new pitcher coming in for South Carolina. The youngster John Gilreath will update his numbers when we come back. Infinity, empower the drive. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Super Regionals presented by Capital One. Hog Ben going crazy. Hogs up 8-2. This is how it started in the first inning. Yeah, fast break offense right out of the gate for the Razorbacks. They had a chance to thwart the rally. They can't turn a double play. Confusion on who's supposed to cover. And you give this team an inch, and they are going to take a mile. Carson Shaddy with a launch piece to left center field. That got the crowd fired up. South Carolina has continued to struggle executing pitches. Arkansas keeps making them pay, and here we are. Well, the winner of this series will get Texas in the opening game at the College World Series. Congrats to the Longhorns. Boy, they got tested by Tennessee Tech. Great game today, exciting game. And of course, uh, Cody Clemens does what he does. He went yard today. Also had a double. That dude can just flat out hit. You want to watch him in Omaha. You could have Arkansas, Texas, little Southwest Conference, old yeah. school Southwest Conference matchup to start Omaha. And I tell you, a tip of the cap to that Texas pitching, too. They held the number yeah, one. They did. I mean, that's an offense that's averaging 10 and a half runs per game, mm -hmm. and they held them down. Texas leads the series with Arkansas 54 to 30. Arkansas 2 and over is Texas this year. Beat them 13 to 4 and 7 to 5. It'll be their fifth College World Series meeting, the last coming in 2004. There's a look at that series history. They would meet early, and you know that'll be something else. Yeah, the place will be hopping there. Still got some outs to get, though. You know he's not going to relax until that 27th out's recorded. Well, the top of the lineup coming up for Arkansas against John Gilreath, really their only left arm out of that bullpen, yeah. a youngster that still should be in high Well, I guess he would have graduated high school now, but this would have been his senior year of high school. Graduated early. Didn't know exactly what they were going to get, but started pitching and when he got to campus in January, and they're like, you know what? Maybe we could use you. And he has got a bright future on the mound. Well, those left-handers, boy, they're hard to find, the ones that throw strikes. It just seems like if you're left-handed, you can throw some strikes. Change speeds a little bit. You can hang around for a while. Gilreath has seen some action here at Baum Stadium in game one when an inning and two thirds struck out two. This is a tough, tough spot to enter the ball game in right here, boy. The switch hitting Cole. Was swinging it pretty well from the other side of the plate with a couple of hits. And now it's 3-0 and oh and no place to put him. That's frustrating as a defender. You see Cortez out there hanging his head a little bit, not because he's frustrated with his guys. It's just the inactivity over a long period of time can get frustrating. I 
Garrett Cole would be kind of happy that was a strike. You want to oh. hit, you want to hit, right? You don't want to oh, walk with the bases juiced. Yeah. Three-one count with the bases yeah. drunk. You are ready to roll. This is where you got to try to just stay in the middle of the field. You can get your best swing off. You want your A swing, but don't get too pull happy right here. And there is the walk. It's now nine to two, and nobody's out. And you got Casey Martin and Heston Kerstad coming up now. Well, this has not been a pretty inning for Carolina pitchers. No, I mean, it's not been a pretty game. Let's just keep saying what it is. It is. Uh, been a struggle for this Gamecock pitching staff, really other than Cody Morris and Sawyer Bridges. Mm. Uh, that's a difference maker right there. We saw Gil Reef with that in game one. He has a good changeup. Yeah, but it's been a struggle from the beginning, not just pitching, but, you know, defensive too. I mean, that, that right. one inning, I mean, that's that, right. that kind of set the tone too. You get an error, you throw a ball away, you, you get a ground ball, double play, there's miscommunication. All of a sudden, Arkansas strikes with a five spot in the bottom of the first, and it, it's been all downhill from there. 17 balls on 24 pitches this inning. You can increase those numbers. Only seven strikes. Yep. Look, it's almost a repeat of, of, of game one. Yeah. You know, and unfortunately. Majinski started, then Lawson, Logan Chapman, Demirius, who left with an apparent injury. Now Gilreath. One and two the count. Well, that's where the a couple change-ups to start the bat off make that fastball mm -hmm. play up a little bit. Just 86 miles an hour there, but after a couple really good change-ups, Martin was tardy on that heater. And good location too. Speed him up, up and in. Yep. I think you're going right back to that changeup, don't you think? I think changeup away. I wouldn't throw it for a strike though. I'm getting it out of the zone, and if I miss, then I'm coming right back with a four seamer in on his hands. Because Gilray's got something special. He does. I mean, he, this is a kid that's going to have a lot uh -huh. of success. You can see it coming because it's a plus changeup. The fastball's only going to get better velocity wise. Well, and if you're a South Carolina fan, you're getting a glimpse of the future. We saw Majinski to oh, start yeah. the game. Logan Chapman has come in, and now John Gilreath. And, and you know, Gilreath just getting started. The other two certainly didn't have their best performances, but those are talented arms that they're going to be leaning on moving into the future to be their guys. I mean, Majinski was the number one rated pitcher coming out of the state of South Carolina his senior year. I really like Gilreath. But it's almost like it's contagious. I mean, it is contagious. You see the guys before you do it. And, and you know, like we always say hitting's contagious. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it, this is contagious, unfortunately, too. I, I just don't think anybody wants to give up that one big, big swing. Right. And you just end up nibbling, nibbling, and it can be almost worse. It's that, that's death by a thousand paper yeah. cuts. It's mm -hmm. kind of what it is, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, it's almost we keep talking about round ball, round bat. I, I mean, you got to take your chances sometimes. Boy, this, this, this lineup just doesn't give you – I mean, you keep looking. And like you said, the top of it is what gets you. Cole's got 13. Martin's got 13. Kerstad, 14. Deep to center. Danny Blair twists and turn. Can't come up with it. Off the wall. That'll score Cook. Biggers will score. Throw to third. Two RBIs off the bat of Casey Martin. Well, Gilry, three balls and two strikes, and I tell you what, Martin just too good. Fastball up out over the plate. I think he thought he got that, but look how good this stroke is. I mean, finds the barrel straight away center field. I thought Danny Blair had a chance out there at first. Kind of spun the wrong way. This ball's going back toward the left center field gap just a little bit. It easily gets over his head. 
And Arkansas is just too good tonight. That was just a, an odd decision by Danny Blair. The initial movement with his head was the right way, and then he switched it to the wrong way. And by the time the baseball got to him, he was five to oh, ten deep. feet inside of the ball. Yeah. Never really had a chance to track that one down. Martin at second. He picks up RBIs 45 and 46. There's Kerstad, the team leader in RBIs with 53. No, 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 he's going to stay yeah. there. And that's what you get when you start wearing that body armor, right? You're feeling good. I can lean right into that. Want to speed the game up? Take the body armor off. Guys won't be leaning out there anymore. Yeah, you know me. I'm, I'm usually the biggest hitter advocate in those situations, but that one, you don't have to stay on that one. <laughs> Sorry, brother. <laughs> right. I'm glad you didn't want to argue no, that. No, I, I, even I can't argue that one. Well, I mean, I like it because it's, you know, it's safety. We're protecting our guys. I get it. But the more we put on, the more likely we are to hang out there over it. First in with a big cut, fouls it. One and one. Well, and, and you know, look, I, I don't, I don't want to get in the tough guy conversation. I don't mind it for the guys that are right-handed throwers, left-handed hitters, or the opposite because you are talking about his throwing elbow. Right. Um, but, you know, th that stigma's gone. It used to be there. it was a lot of kind of a badge of honor to not wear. Now mm -hmm. everybody wears it, and it's not a big deal. Fouls that one back the other way. Now it's one and two. And Bonds was the one that first really made it in. In vogue, yeah. and of course, nobody put their toes on the white edges well, of home plate like Barry Bonds. Yeah, he, but it made him feel ten foot tall and bulletproof, you know. And, and that's the way you, you just stand and right up was, on the dish. The yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> he was pretty good. Yeah, he was all right. Fly ball out to Blair. This should get a run home. Cole's at third. He'll tag up. Martin will hustle over to third. It's now a 12 to 2 game. And the chance of Luke as Luke Bonfield comes to the plate. Boy, this South Carolina defense has been out here in it's the field time. for a long, long time. Yeah, and they're having to play that infield in now. They're trying to cut off runs. So far, 29 minutes for this half inning, and it's not over yet with just one out as Skyler Mead quickly makes a call to the bullpen. And boy, he is not happy right now. He is. A frustrated pitching coach. Casey Martin doing most of the damage. A shot out to center field, plates two. Now has 46 runs batted in. His second hit of the day. It's a big one. As the College World Series and the eight teams making their way to TD Ameritrade, you see most times wow. with three plus College World Series teams, the SEC. That's pretty times. loud. That's pretty loud there, Dave Neal. What you think? Well, yeah. I mean, you look around what's left in these super regionals, and a lot of SEC teams going toe to toe. Mississippi State and Vandy had a great series last night. Florida Auburn having a great series going on right now. And this one's gotten a little bit out of hand. I mean, as many championships as the Pac 12 has won. They've only had one year where three teams were in Omaha. You, I would expect more than that. I mean, one year they had the Arizona State Southern Cal Championship where they had an all uh, Pac-12 championship game. Well, Rich Chapman coming in the game for South Carolina, the junior. Just throws one to the backstop, and that wakes up the crowd a little bit. 17th round pick to the Nationals. It's a big arm now. 
92 to 95 miles an hour. Looks like one kind of got away from him in warm-ups. Check this out. Hey, now. Now, Ben, have you ever done that on purpose? Oh, yes. You hit the backstop on purpose? Oh, yeah, I back like the that. screen. I like that. With a guy in the box. What was what level were you at? College. Yeah, just hit the backstop. Yeah, 0-2 count. Just sell one about five foot. Just like right it. over the top of everything. What would you throw next pitch? A breaking ball. Hammer? Well, Jelly legged him. Got him? Yeah. No, yeah. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to cut one loose just yeah. to make them halfway think you're a little wild, you know? Our fourth pitcher of the inning. Runs one up on Luke Bonfield. And another one missed the plate. Luke, couple of hits tonight. Only one out in this inning. Infield in, and that one out to center field. It'll drop in for a base hit. And Casey Martin will come to the score. Well, the senior is having a monster game in his last time to compete at Baum Stadium. You got We talk a lot about these freshman guys, but Carson Shaddy and Luke Bonfield, the seniors, are really winning the day. His third hit of the game, and of course, he's, he really does a good job of staying behind the ball. Wants to work to the back side of the field. And a special moment for the two seniors in this line. Excuse me, there's, there's three seniors with Jared Gates as well. But big day for those two. Now it's Dominic Fletcher. How about four RBIs for Bonfield. He's now up to 39 this season. Last five plate appearances, four for four. Sack fly and those four runs batted in. That's getting it done. And again, the depth of this lineup, of course, South Carolina is certainly giving them a lot of gifts, but Dominic Fletcher has not gotten a hit. Your five-hole hitter has not gotten a hit in the Super Regional, and, you know, the offense isn't slowed down a no. bit. It's 13-2. to two. Yeah. Well, they put nine runs up in game one. Arkansas did. 13 here. We're not out of the fifth. Six pitchers have been used by South Carolina. This inning alone has seen a hit batter, three walks, a double, a sack fly, and a single. Is that it? That's it. <laughs> That's all. Hogs have scored 10 plus runs in three of their six NCAA tournament games. Now, will this offense play at TD Ameritrade? Well, we'll see the conditions. Last year it was very offensive. This could be two. Tolbert to row across the diamond, and that'll get the Gamecocks back to the dugout. Boy, nearly a 40 minute half inning. Arkansas putting on a show right now. They lead it by 11. Well, we're almost down to who will be the Golden Spikes Award winner. Cody Clemens making a strong case for it. This guy has been on a tear. Casey Mize, of course, the number one pick in this year's Major League Draft. Brady Singer looks so good mm. the other day pitching for the Gators. And Andrew Vaughn has been destroying the baseball all season long out in Cal. But uh, I tell you what, it's hard not to appreciate what this guy has done right here. I got him. I, I'll take Cody Clemens, Ben. I, I know you may be leaning a little Brady Singer, but I, I'll take Cody Clemens. Andrew Vaughn had a fantastic year, but Cal did not make the postseason. I don't want to necessarily hold that against him. I just don't think there's been any player in the country that has meant more to his team and had more big moments than Cody Clemens. And of course, we saw that this weekend in the Super Regional. Yeah, I can I cannot disagree with that. I think he's been outstanding. He's done it on a big stage, and he's done it throughout the season too. Started the year at third base, moved over to second base, been playing some outstanding defense. I think they're getting the message from <laughs> Hawk no. Noxious. But I love me some Brady Singer now. Yeah. And look, he's a real ace and he's a real dude. And, and, and as he goes, does the Florida Gators go too. So 
Justin Rowe to lead things off. I think it's a two-horse race at this point for I me. I do, too. I think Casey Mize, while the talent is outstanding, you know, he struggled a little bit down the stretch. Kind of took him out of the race a little bit. Outstanding year. But I think it's a two-horse race. Well, again, going back to making it comparable to the Heisman Trophy, let's just say. If you struggled your last month in college football, say let's just take a quarterback, for instance, and all of a sudden your interceptions were more than your touchdowns for a month in a row. Now, I know that's not apples to apples. You wouldn't see – you wouldn't see – that player still win the Heisman, I don't think. No. And Casey hasn't been quite at that level, but it has been a totally different Casey Mize the last month than it was the first three oh, months. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. I think it's a two-horse race. I, I agree with that. Now you, now, you go back to the midseason point, you know, and it's mm -hmm. Casey Mize all mm -hmm. day long. But, hey, it's tough. You know, when you're supposed to and you're supposed to be the number one pick, it, it physically, mentally, it is a drain. And I'm not making excuses for Casey, but the stuff's just not been the same. But I just think he, he's pitching like he's not quite as fresh as he yeah. was early, you know, and, and it, it takes it out of you over time. Well, there's a lot going on there with mm. carrying the mantle, being the number one pick, and all that comes along with that. Ground ball. Oh, wow. Out to Biggers. <laughs> Let's go back to the fourth inning, which was a interesting play at the plate, and a couple of runs came in to score. It looked like we yeah. had a hit by pitch, but that wasn't the case at all. Yeah, if the, if, even if the hitter swings, it, it would be a strike, but if it hits his back foot, the ball would be dead, and the runners would not advance. So we didn't get a clarification on the ruling, but the fact that the two runner scores was our clarification, which was they deemed that it did not hit Tolbert's, Tolbert's foot. Correct. So both runners were allowed to score, and we just want to clean that up because we, we we were errant in our description that if that the ball was live because it was a swing. That's not the case. The ball would have been dead if they deemed that it hit his foot. They deemed that it didn't, so the ball was still live in a two-run score. LT Tolbert. And that one just misses. Yeah, we talk about Lowski throws a lot of fastballs, and it's got a little something different to it, but he's got a pretty good changeup, too. There's a strike. One and two the count. Well, that's South Carolina defense was on the field exactly 40 minutes that last half yeah. inning. Wow. I mean, it's hard. It, it's, it's one of those games you sit in a dugout and you go, what happened? Uh, you know, we've all been there before. If you played the game enough, you've all, you've all been there. It snowballs so fast on you. Martin makes the play at third base. The fact that they were able to turn that double play cleanly yeah. says something about their focus. Well, look, the, the concern for this coaching staff all year long was the bullpen. And when you run a freshman out there and he doesn't get you deep in the game and you get some talented bullpen arms but not the most consistent and they can't go out there and execute, you start to see the underbelly of some of the early season struggles from South Carolina. What allowed them to be so good down the stretch is that the Graham Lawsons and Ridge Chapmans John Gilry, those guys that give them great innings, get the ball to Demurius and to Bridges at the end. But we just haven't seen that version of the bullpen here this evening, and it's it's cost them. Hunter Taylor behind 0-1. There's Majinski. He started the game. Lawson got some work. Demurius got some work. Heck, pretty much anybody that mm -hmm. pitches got some yeah. Yeah, and a lot of those guys got some work in game one, you know, and, and you wonder how quick they bounce back.
So this is what we were talking about with Lowski. He's trying to dot that bottom of the zone heater away for strike three. And Wes Johnson wants him more and more to trust that ball that's just above the belly button because mm -hmm. that's really what the track man numbers say is his best, most effective pitch. But that's going to take some time because that's, I mean, his whole life he's been taught to throw a ball in a certain spot in a certain situation. Mm -hmm. and you always pitch off the count. And now you got a pitching coach telling you, hey, you got something special. But it's hard at the end of the day when you're throwing 87 to 89 miles mm -hmm. an hour and say, you know what? It's one and two or it's two and two. I'm yeah. just going to throw one right down the middle just above the belt right here. Now, you can get some freeze me on the bottom because hitters expect that ball to, to get down, to be down, and it can hold its plane at the bottom as well. What I don't understand, though, is Cook has the target. Yeah, he keeps setting he up low, doesn't it? Down yeah, there. no, you're right. And so Lowski's throwing to the glove, which is what he should be doing. I'm surprised we haven't seen a, a more of a belly button high glove right. or a face mask high glove for the catcher. But you should see one target. now. I mean, 13 and 2, 3 2 count, 2 out, nobody on. I expect the target. We'll see where Cook puts the target, but it should be just about thigh high saying, here, throw it right down the middle. Let's see how far he can hit it. There it is. It wasn't the target, but that's the pitch that he has the yeah. most effective results on. The folk hero, Carson Shatty, grabbing a bat when we come back. The star of the lineup for Arkansas this Super Regional has been Carson Shatty. The hometown kid has been putting on a show, a big double in game one to clear the bases, a two-run bomb in game two to try to keep his team in it. And then here in game three, a launch piece to left center field in the first inning. Mom and dad have loved it. The team loved it. He's just been full of emotion and joy. Carson Shaddy has been the star for Arkansas, hitting 509 ribbies. And I got to believe well on his way to being the MVP of this Super Regional. Playing well at the right time as Carson will grab a bat and lead things off. Boys all smiles, having a good time in that Arkansas dugout. Why not? Shaddy, a 339 hitter. Dad played baseball here. Played a year with Dave Van Horn. Grew up in Fayetteville. A huge Arkansas fan. Living the dream. Pops that one up to the right side. Williams toward the seats, and he runs out of room. I, mean, I can't imagine what that feeling is like to grow up your whole life being a fan of whatever team it may be and then get to star on a baseball team mm -hmm. and you ride it out you've been the ups and downs part of that seven only seven win season in the SEC two years ago and they had that lengthy losing streak to finish yep. out the year and then to watch it turn around and be a big part a big piece of this I mean it's got to make mom and dad bust with pride yeah I just I think that he will look back, and, and, and Arkansas baseball fans will look back as we get a look at his mom. At Carson Shaddy being, you know, just one of the rocks of one of the best periods of time in, in Arkansas baseball history. Think about it. He will have been here for – they go on to win this game. It will be two College World Series appearances, two Super Regional hosting opportunities. So he's been a part of some of the best moments in, in our, at least of the Dave Van Horn era. Yeah, one of the worst, too, and that's what makes yeah, it special. That's right, I mean, that's right. you, he's been he's seen both sides of it, yeah. you know? But it makes you appreciate the good times even that much more. I love these kids. These kind of, you know, they represent college baseball. Mm. You know, fifth year senior, been through it all, hangs around a program. As I'm telling you, man, and I think you'll agree, college baseball for me was the best years of my life, oh. no doubt. And, and did you hear Tim Corbin last night after the yes. after the I Super love, Regional? I love what he said. I and love what he said. And, there was and some, it's so true. And there was some blowback on Twitter from some people about Tim Corbin saying that professional baseball, unless you get basically to meaningful games, and he said playoffs or the World Series, I'll, I'll tweak it a little bit and say 
meaningful games in September and then obviously October. Unless you get all the way to that stage of professional baseball, there's nothing in professional baseball that can compare to the Super Regionals. And I would agree 100% with that. That's a 100% true statement. Yes. And there was some blowback on Twitter that that, that was somehow self-serving, but it's just true. It might be self-serving. That doesn't make it not true. And obviously Tim Corbin fights the draft every year because they recruit at as high a level as anybody. But it's still true what he's saying because as as a couple guys that have lived both sides of it, there is nothing in professional baseball (laughs) other than trying to win a pennant down the stretch and trying to get to World Series from a team care factor standpoint that compares to being in tournament baseball with your college teammates. Right, and I think he was mainly talking mostly about the minor league system. You 100%. Know? And, and, and listen, I mean, everybody wants to win, but the truth is about the minor league, you're there for development. And, and, and winning is really, it sounds crazy, and you know this, it's really oh, secondary. Yeah, no doubt. The primary thing is we develop our kids, and we make them better to hopefully get them to the big league level. It's not so much surrounded around winning. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love about this super regional. We get to cover them on our networks and celebrate because mm-hmm. truly the super regional round is, is and the regional round too but this super regional round the passion and intensity surrounding it is such a celebration of our sport the crowds the crowds all weekend have been sensational sensation everywhere all around the country and the drama you look at washington and fullerton last night washington gets to go to their first ever college world series and get to experience what it's like to be in omaha and the people here in fayetteville have just showed up in record numbers because they love college baseball, and you just don't get this kind of passion anywhere in the minor leagues. Gates behind one and two, and he'll head back to the dugout after the strikeout. Back-to-back strikeouts now. For more coverage of the Division I Baseball Super Regionals and interactive brackets, be sure to go to NCAA.com. So Grant Cook will step in. He is singled, struck out, and walked. A little bit below the knees. Little logo behind the helmets of these Arkansas batters and Arkansas fans have seen them throughout the season. But the JFB, for a long time, Arkansas athletic director, Frank Broyles, John Franklin Broyles, who passed away last August. Such a wonderful human being. Glad I had a chance to be around him and meant so much to this program for so long. The JFB. Coach Broyles actually hired Dave Van Horn. Ooh, nice decision. I think that's worked out okay. I think so. And one of the great programs in the Southeastern Conference, no doubt, and certainly now on the national level, an elite program as he looks to take them to their fifth World Series under his guidance. Swing and a miss. How about the three strikeouts from Ridge Chapman? Olsen, Williams, and Campbell coming up. Commissioner Sly, we miss you. Coming down to the wire in Gainesville. Woo, buddy. Couple teams with really talented offenses playing some pitchers' duels. I mean, the pitching staffs for both those teams yeah. showing up. South Carolina, the last team to go back to back national championships. Florida has that opportunity. I know it's a frustrating night for South Carolina, but you can't overlook the job. As Jacob Olson steps in, that Mark Kingston and his entire staff did just to get him, get this team oh, to this point. 
the middle of the year, I mean, it was it was ugly. Yeah, it was a uh, twenty and what, twenty and seventeen. Yeah. They came here to Fayetteville. They lost two or three. They went home. They lose to Presbyterian. They go twenty and seventeen. They dropped what four of their first five SEC turn weekends, and all of a sudden, boy, they got hot when LSU came to town. And won five SEC weekends in a row. Nobody did that in the conference. Well, and, and part of it is what you see right there with him with LT Tolbert putting his arm around him, and this is this is a guy that gets it. He, he just, you can tell he understands players. And, yes, he can be authoritative, and, yes, he can discipline, but kids, you can tell, want to play for him, and he has a very good manner with them, and there's almost no panic, and, and very rarely will you see him lose his cool. And I, I just think the team responded to that in some very rough waters. Well, and he knows because, he you know, he was a player himself. Of course. And a good one, and so he understands – the ups and downs and the struggles that there are and what players go through. But I love the way he navigated them oh. back. That ball is smoked off the bat of Olsen. Is it enough to get out of here? It is. He was actually caught out there in the bullpen on the fly. Well, Jacob Olsen getting one out of here. His 11th home run of the year. Olsen can do that to you. 11 home runs. Just a quick twitch athlete. Looking great job. Watch him keep the arms connected to the body. Just a gator arm move. Ton of rotational speed through that ball. And that is a bullet in the left field bullpen. Now, he didn't have much trouble with an elevated fastball from Lowski. How about Rindel out there casually making the catch? Like, no big deal. I'll just catch this while I keep pitching. <laughs> See Rindle down there. They probably want to get him back in and get him feeling better after a poor outing yesterday. But you got to think Cronin's going to throw at some point. I would be surprised if, if they don't want to at least get him just from a work standpoint oh, yeah. heading no, into Omaha. No, he's going to get some work. Yeah. Unless there's something going on we don't know about. And I think it's going to be more than one inning of work, too. I think it could be like five outs. There's Mr. Cronin, a left-hander. That is a big league arm right mm -hmm. there. Yeah, you don't see any left-handed closers. Left-handers at the back end of a bullpen. High in the air. Biggers says he has it, and he does. Jack's making the play for the first out. So Noah Campbell, who came in to play a little defense last inning, will have his first at-bat. A freshman out of Durham, North Carolina. And, you know, the question now moves to how does South Carolina replace all the production? We talked about the seniors all, all year long, Stokes and Bride and Rowe and Taylor. How do they replace that production? Oh, by the way, they're probably going to lose Cortez, and Tolbert, mm -hmm. that's a bunch of numbers to replace, right? And if they're going to, it's going to start with this gentleman right here is going to be one of the answers to that to that question. They need him to make a big jump this summer. Chris Cullen we saw in the lineup yesterday. He's going to come back as a senior. They need him to be a dude in the middle of the order. You know, this isn't a fan base in South Carolina that's going to be real patient in rebuilding years, right? So, yes, super in year one is fantastic, but Mark Kingston and his staff are going to have their work cut out for them to figure out how to replace all the production they're losing next year. No doubt. Well, Arkansas, too. So, I mean, you, you got Martin and Kerstad coming back. That always helps. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, there are 21 players drafted between these two teams. 21, the most out of any super regional. So, yeah, you, you, you got Martin, Kerstad, and that's, Fletcher coming back. That's a pretty good start, you're, Yeah, you're, you're, you're doing, doing all right. You'll take those three. Of course, Fletcher's a sophomore. The other two, freshmen. Time to get another update. What's going on with that Florida-Auburn game, Matt?
It's only a 10-point game here. Touchdown and a field goal tie this thing up. Yep. How about that slide into home plate? Auburn tying up the ball game. How about Anthony in that at bat? He fouled off five pitches before mm. he got that one out to right. Well, Lowski will call it a night. Dave Van Horn going to go to that bullpen. And, Ben, I think this sets up what you were talking about, which you could get Rindle to get you through this one and then let Cronin throw the eighth and the ninth. Yeah. There was no doubt Cronin was going to get more than one inning. He's been your dude all year, and you want him on the bump. Heading to Omaha. Thirteen three, our score here in the top of the seventh. We'll update the Arkansas pitching change when we come back. Welcome back to the NCAA baseball Super Regionals presented by Capital One. Arkansas feeling pretty good about things right now. In the top of the seventh inning, they are up ten. Jake Ryan will get in the ball. It was not pretty for. Jake, his last outing, the junior from right here in Fayetteville, struggled last night, making his 24th appearance, ERA at three, 17th round pick of the Cubs. As you guys talked about, they need to get him feeling good about things. And first guy he faces, though, is the guy that can make you feel some pain, Carlos Cortez. Well, you either stay in the same rut you're in or your confidence level goes really high if you get him out. Carlos has got all the gear. Oh, With, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got the face guard, the oh, eye yeah. black. The sleeve. Got, yeah. He got the, the sl uh, slide guard in the back yeah. pocket, the oven mitt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He is swag to the max now. Yeah, that, he got the, the, the cheek guard, the eye black. I mean, it's, it's full throttle, Ben. Is he missing anything? Just a football helmet. <laughs> a pair of shoulder pads. Oh, and now Cortez will, will hear from the folks here. He thought that was ball four. He just said that he didn't hear him. Yeah, he said, my bad. Yeah. Rindle's got that little cut life at mm -hmm. the end of it. See that? Just that little bit of cut action at the end of his heater. And there is ball four. And guys, he does not look like mm -hmm. he's in command of anything right no. now. And when you struggle as a pitcher, you, it's hard because you've gotten hit around a little bit. But the reason why you've gotten hit around is you've probably fallen in too many plus counts. And so to get out of it, you've got to go back to attack in the strike zone. Madison Stokes 0 for 3. One of his two hits in the Super was a home run. A senior designated hitter. We'll wrap up his South Carolina career. It's Cole Ramage now getting loose. Yeah, and Ramage hadn't pitched in this series either. That's right. So. Back-to-back -back good breaking balls. Mm -hmm. 
Got to go back to that breaking ball here. You would think. 2-2 two -two count. That's been the one he's been able to control the most. Fastball a little bit loose right now. Mm -hmm. Stokes strikes out. Second out of the inning. That'll bring the old confidence up a notch or two. Look like he's maybe found a pitch he yep. can rely on. Good look at Baum Stadium. Most of these folks have hung around despite the 13 to 3 game. Yeah, they want they want the celebration. I don't, I don't know that I've seen anybody leave this place. They, they are hanging around. Oh. For the dog pile. I feel like we've seen less dog piles this year clinching to Omaha. Yeah, like who who was it who avoided that? To, was that today? Somebody, Texas didn't yeah. do it. Um, uh, Oregon State, I don't believe, did it. That used to be a. I get the regional, <laughs> but to me, you, you go to Omaha. I know yeah. some of these programs that have been. To me, you go to Omaha, you should dog pile for me. Absolutely, because uh, that don't come along very no, often. I, no, I saw Jake school. Mangum last night, though, around that Mississippi State yeah. dog pile. He kind of like faked and then right, went yeah. around mm -hmm. and was like the last guy on the pile. Yeah. Come on, Jake. I saw it, buddy. <laughs> he did not want to be on the bottom <laughs> no, of the pile. No, he, he didn't, didn't, sure he didn't want him on the bottom yeah. of the pile. Gary Henderson. <laughs> yeah, He's fine with that. You, you go on the top, Jake. You're all right. That'd be just fine with us. Yeah, he was looking for somebody to grab and hug. It looked like <laughs> he ran around with his mouth open and finally just jumped right on top. <laughs> Folks, Jake Mangum, center fielder for Mississippi State, is one of the best, most exciting players in the country. You'll want to keep an eye on him starting this weekend in Omaha. Yeah, not a whole lot he can't do. Threw a few guys out in that Super Regional. Been wearing out the baseball oh, yeah. for and a the, while. That's now. a young man that understands how special college baseball is. He's turned down the draft to come back. Already turned down the draft to come right. back to his senior year. Jonah Bride walks, base is loaded. Three walks this inning. It is getting sloppy, and I think guys have lost their focus. And Justin Rowe will step in. Justin one for three. With a double. Justin the senior. From out in California, wrapping up his career as a Gamecock. Swing and a miss there. 0 and 2. And really kudos to these seniors at South Carolina. Hanging in there when things look bleak. Went through a coaching change and helped get this team to a super regional. Well, looks like Rindle may have found that breaking ball. He gets a couple of strikeouts. Biggers, Cole, and Martin coming up. One of the great moments in college baseball is the calling of the Hogs here at Bomb Stadium. And we will hear it after take me out to the ball game.
a good time here at Baum Stadium. While we have a moment, let's get another update. Matt Schick, what's going on? That sounds like fun down in Gainesville. Some tournament news and notes. Mississippi State late last night. A game went five hours long. Bulldogs loved every minute of it. They outlast Vanderbilt in extra innings. First trip to Omaha since 2013. Washington, their first trip ever. Texas advances earlier today. Cody Clemens, a home run in each one of those super regional games against Tennessee Tech and Auburn in Florida. Auburn hadn't been there since 1997. Florida trying to defend their national championship. They are tied 2-2, as Matt just told you, in game three. You can catch that one over on ESPN. But why would you want to leave this? No. I mean, when, when, how often are you going to get Berkey and, and, and Ben McDonald together? And really? the calling of the Hogs. And the yeah. Right. I'd just like to say congratulations to Lindsey Meggs and the, and the Washington program. Their first ever trip. What a what a season. There was a long period of time, y'all. They were a bubble, and some people said they were right. in the last four in. And to be representing the Pac-12 as one of the last four in, maybe. I think it's it shows the quality of baseball at the top end of the Pac-12. Now, there's I don't think there's the depth in the Pac-12 this year as there are some, but Oregon State, Washington, of course, Stanford got upset in their own regional, but we know they had a great club. It'll be interesting to see how Washington pairs up in Omaha, but congratulations to them. What a season. Jax Biggers, the nine-hole hitter, stepping in for Arkansas. Then it'll be Cole and Martin. You know, there's always going to be that two, three teams that will feel like they should have gotten in, and everybody will have an opinion on the three teams, four mm -hmm. teams that got in that maybe they felt shouldn't get in. But kudos to Ray Tanner, the athletic director over at South Carolina, who was chairman of the Baseball Selection Committee this year. I, I think those guys, and when you look at these Super Regionals and how six of them have gone to game three, mm -hmm. um, shows that they've actually paired up teams in the right pods and the right regionals, and it has been a lot of fun. That ball was smoked, but it's going to stay in the ballpark. Biggers has hit it on the barrel a bunch tonight. Doesn't have a whole lot to show for it. <laughs> oh. Join us on ESPN this Tuesday night as Major League Baseball presented by USAA showcases the Mets and the Braves from Atlanta, GA. They'll feature Hank Aaron videos during the broadcast, and Hank himself will be in the booth for part of the game. Coverage starts at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. I, ben, I ever tell you my story about Hank Aaron's 715 home run? I don't know if I have or not. That one's hit to left, and it's pretty deep. Cole looking like Hank Aaron smashes one over the fence. Eric Cole is feeling it tonight. Slow in the first two games, not tonight. He's got a single, a double, a a home run and a couple of walks, and he has scored four runs. And there's your school record, 94th home run on the season for this offense that is as good as any in the country. Eric Cole has had five times up tonight and has yet to make an out. His third hit is an oppo taco into the left field bullpen. Load up and release, young fella. A, a ballpark where it really jumps to left field. Cole gets one elevated to left, and it rides into the bullpen as the Razorbacks tack on another one. Yeah, we kept waiting for him to show up. We saw the numbers coming in. Had those 13 home runs at Eric Cole when this series began. And, boy, he has made up for a pretty quiet first two nights and this third night. Skyler Mead out to the mound. Been a, finished up that Hank Aaron story. 7-15, April 8th, 1975. My brother's birthday. My dad took us down to the ballpark. The Braves went 1-2-3 in the first. So as the Dodgers were coming up, 
in the top of the second. They got out, and I'm like, you know, there's some, nobody's going to be at the concession stand, so I'm going to run out there and give you something to eat real quick. No, you didn't. And then I'll be right back. And guess what happened while I was at the concession stand? Hammer and Hank hit 7.15. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Wow. So a 14 to three game with one out. And a new pitcher on the mound for South Carolina. And while we have a second, let's get an update from Matt Schick as we talk some more. Teams heading to Omaha. Don't tell me, right? Don't tell me that it's not yeah. important. The guy's yeah. in the big leagues, right? Losing his mind. <laughs> right. I don't know what exactly that was, but that uh, sounds like a lot of joy and a big-time care factor for a dude who's currently in the big leagues. So Washington and Mississippi State will square off. North Carolina, Oregon State, they will meet on the first day. College World Series begins this weekend, beginning at 3 o'clock. Eastern time on ESPN. Still trying to figure things out on this side of the bracket, that's for sure. Do it, young fella. Go ahead, feel that flow. Feel it. Tonight, after Albany and Florida wrap things up at their Super Regional over on ESPN, stick around for Sports Center with Bucci and Kitty Maine. They'll have more on Kevin Durant's retirement plan, plus highlights from around the majors. Including, including Madison Bumgarner's second start of the season. Boy, it's been disappointing not to see him pitch this year. Glad he's back. Plus, the top plays of the college baseball season. I have a feeling there'll be a few of those in the postseason on that list. There have been How about that, man. That fires me up. Sports Center's going to do top plays of college baseball season. That gets me all jacked up. Top plays of the college baseball season. I tell you what, the uh, Elijah McNamee walk-off homer at Florida State. That was that's, pretty big. That's got to be up there. I just put the whole Vandy Mississippi State Super on there. Yeah, exactly. Just cut the all highlights three, of that. Yeah, all three games. <laughs> just cut the highlights of that. The play Martin made the night here, the backhand dive, I thought it was an outstanding play. Yeah. Casey Mize, 15 punch out. No hitters. Got to be on there somewhere. Man, there's just so many moments to choose from. Yeah, I don't know how you get them down. It's just glad it's not us. Casey Martin. How about uh, Connor Kaiser's three home runs and ten ribbies in a regional final game against Clemson? Yeah, that's got. I mean, I just. I mean, we could go on and on. Yeah, <laughs> there have been some great moments. Parker Coyne on for South Carolina. Pull the string on that one. I mean, how about Eric Cole's night? A walk in the first and scored, a single in the second and scored, a double in the ninth and scored, a walk in the fifth and scored, and a home run in the seventh to score. Mm, that'll get her done from your leadoff man. Nice pitches from Coyne, and he'll get the strikeout. Second out of the inning. Now back in the Riverbacks, number 18, Kirsten. Coin throwing the pitches, by the way, to Chris Cullen, who has checked in for Hunter Taylor behind the plate. I just keep thinking about Casey Martin, Heston Kerstad walking to the plate for two more years to come for this Razorback program. What a duo to deal with. Kerstad fouls that one away. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like where do you go from here? You know? Yeah. 
I mean, really. Sometimes it's hard to back up a great freshman well, year. Well, remember what Jake Mangum did, right? Led the SEC yep. his first year, hit over 400, yep. you know, and, and everybody said, well, he's not as good. But truth of the matter, it, it, it's tough. He was banged up. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's hard to back that kind of year up. J.J. Schwartz at Florida. J.J. Yep. Schwartz at Florida is a great example. So, I mean, you, you, you think. How about Spencer Torkelson out at Arizona State set to yeah. all-time record for home runs out there for a freshman? It, yeah, where do you go? Where you do know? you go? Lead the country in homers. Where do you go? But you can certainly get better, and the results not be that's better, right. though. That's, that, right. that, that's, that's the right. idea. I mean, you, you get, you know, it's hard to get better than those numbers. I mean, those are true freshman numbers. Those 14 homers by Kerstad, of course, the most ever for a freshman in Arkansas history. Look at the RBIs. But I, I think Casey Martin, what you're going to see a guy, you know, only stole seven or eight bags. bags okay, I no think doubt. you look at him, okay, how can he get better? Well, he's certainly capable. It wouldn't surprise me if he stole 20 bags next year, you know, maybe more than that. So that's how he can get better. I think Kerstad, after watching him a little bit this year, defense for me. I think he needs to get a little bit better defensively. No doubt. He's not bad, but I think he can improve his game there. Mm -hmm. and of course, that's what summer ball is for. And these guys will go, you know, they'll have the, the postseason meetings. And there's the 933 just on time <laughs> going through. But you know, you'll have the, the, the exit meetings. And you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll get feedback when the season's over. I think one thing I would do if I was Dave Van Horn, if you want Casey Martin to steal more bags, Split him. I wouldn't hit him right in front of Kerstad. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I'd hit maybe Martin first, let Kerstad hit third. Because that is something, that, uh, if you look at Arkansas now, if you're going to poke holes here and there, you know, maybe the defense needs to get a little bit better. But I think they need to steal more bags. They got the kind of team that, you know, that hits the home runs. They can do it. hit the long ball. Cortez now out in right field will make that catch. So that'll do it for the Hogs in their half of the seventh. Home run off the bat of Cole. Makes it a 14 to 3 game. Yes, the boys are back. Six of the eight have been determined, two remaining. Most College World Series appearances, Texas now give them 36 after their win today against Tennessee Tech. Miami in second with 25 appearances. Hurricanes not in the NCAA tournament this year. Florida State, what a tough way. To bow out, losing in the regional on a walk-off with two strikes in the ninth inning. And we need to get Southern Cal back in the mix. Mm. Well, they are out of the mix. Cole Ramage getting the ball here in the eighth inning. The freshman out of South Lake, Texas. His 18th appearance on the year. Those are pretty good numbers right there. And 30 to third, 42 strikeouts, 13 walks. Still waiting on Cronin. I know he wants to get in this super. Got to think you're going to use him in the ninth, right? You would think. I mean, just because he hadn't pitched yet. Got to have my guy sharp. If I'm going to Omaha, got to have that left hander rocking. Well, coming into this series, we would have never projected that Arkansas would have a chance to win two out of three and not have to pitch Matt Cronin. You just you wouldn't project it, that there'd be a couple lopsided wins. But I never thought we'd see the walks that we've right, seen from right, both sides. Exactly. Too. I, I never thought the pitching would have yielded the free passes that it had. And that's both teams. Now, that's been twice now for South Carolina, yeah. game one and game three. But look, Arkansas, same boat last night. And going forward for Arkansas, I think that's a little bit of a concern, the bullpen. Yes. LT Tolbert. One and two count. Well, and I, I think, too, I mean, let's be honest. They both grinded, but you didn't exactly see a razor sharp Blaine Knight or Casey Murphy. Mm -mm. Right? I mean, Isaiah Campbell for four innings or so was as good as those two were. Now, I'm not worried at all about the offense. The offense is going to do its thing. It has all season long. They, most of them seem to be firing on all cylinders. But, I mean, when you're talking about Arkansas pitch, you're talking number, about number two pitching staff in the SEC. It's been really good. But you're right. Blaine Knight's given up 18 home runs, but to his credit, 16 of them solo shots. Well, you, you say the one thing that's if it's normal TD Ameritrade, you're not going to get the balls like the ball Eric Cole just hit out of No here. doubt. The, the oppo fly balls will not go out of that yard. So, now last year it was more offensive. We had to win blowing out. Normally, if it's warm, the wind's going to blow in. And so Arkansas is not going to be able to rely on the, the home run as much. 
Doesn't mean they can't hit some balls out of there, but probably not many oppo ones. But it just seems like this time of the year, because the arms are getting a little bit tired, the innings have accumulated, you know, that the hitters are a little bit ahead. I mean, the hitters yeah, just, yeah, just are ahead. Yeah. And you don't normally see – I mean, every now and then you'll see the pitching matchup you hope you get at the College World Series, but a lot of times it just doesn't pan out. That one's down the line and left. Gerstad, long run, and that'll Ooh. be a – Ooh, that was close. Foul ball. How about the effort from Gerstad? He, you know, he continues to amaze me because for a big guy, he covers and closes He can ground. run. Like, he can really run. And this is a big man getting over there. Not the best jump either, but, boy, once he starts moving, he is moving. And that ball, if I'll it missed, it, it missed I'll barely. I'm not sure. We're going to get a look at it right here. Yeah, it missed. Yeah, it did. Great call. Missed by a couple inches. Our yeah, boy well. Mike Morris all over that one, Ben. Yeah, how come they're not cheering him for that good call, right? <laughs> <What's> <laughs> <I mean? laughs> <laughs> where's the where's the ball? <laughs> Swing and a miss. Tolbert going down. Arkansas. They have been to eight prior College World Series and program history. Trying to make it nine. They were runners up back in 1979. The last two times, but. Prior to this, that they've hosted a Super Regional in 04, and again in 15, they were able to win the Super here at Baum Stadium and make it to Omaha, trying to do the same in 2018. They took down Florida State in 04 in two games. Chris Cullen, who came in to catch for Hunter Taylor, his first at bat, he's behind 0 and 2. Now, Rambo just showing me a little bit, a little split finger. For a strikeout, a pretty good breaking ball. Man, that's a hammer right there. I like that. I like the location of it, too. Two and two the count. Two and two on Cullen. That one just misses. By the way, congrats to Tim Tadlock at Texas Tech. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're going to Omaha, and those guys can swing it. They are an offensive machine. What a program Tim Tadlock has built down there. I love it. Hard right, hit ball. There's Martin with a stab and a throw. My goodness. How about that all? Frozen rope coming across the diamond. How about that? Again, it's, it's, just a freshman. It's so easy for him. You said it the other night, Berkey. I mean, the explosion. Look, he's standing straight up right there, but watch him get down in his crouch, and there's a rocket to the back inside. Look how quick, and I'm talking about a cannon across how the diamond. How smooth is this 360 slide? Look at this. Just a little 360 piece, hop up, and a linea across the field. Momentum took him that way, so he just continued to spin around and just a rocket. Mm. I'd like to get a radar on that. It's easy. I mean, he looks like he's been over there for a long time. I wish we had, like, the baseball combine like they did the NFL combine. Right. I would love to see his scores. Broad jump, vertical jump, 5-10-5, 40-yard dash. This kid would light up a combine. Oh, and he can play, too, by the way. Jacob Olson, the right fielder, homered his last time up. And he may have homered this time as well. Hey, how you doing, Jacob Olson? The back innings for Mr. Olson. The fans don't want any part of that. The lean on one big fella, yeah. huh? What we got here, Ben? A high heater? High heater. 
He's a fastball up and out over the plate. Olsen gets the barrel out to it, catches it just out in front. And the fan, the home fans don't want any piece. Oh, we got a southpaw launching it back into play. Don't hit Kerstad now. <laughs> you have to deal with Dave Van Horn. Matt Williams with two outs. He will look at strike one. Matt 0 for 2 with a walk. Two on Williams. That pitch is filthy. Yeah, pretty good splitty right there, huh? Didn't go. <laughs> Listen, my man Mike Morris has stood tall this weekend. Oh, yes, he has. He got an earful from this crowd yesterday, and we hit on earlier. He stuck by that strike zone throughout the game. Swing and a miss. The inning is over. The NCAA Baseball Super Regionals is presented by the Capital One Venture Car. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? And in part by T-Mobile, America's most loved wireless company. Join the uncarrier today. And Tecate and Tecate Lite, born bold. Enjoy responsibly. A lot of big hits by Arkansas. They've had some help with the errant pitching of South Carolina. Ten hits, but 14 runs. It has not been a good night on the mound for the Gamecocks. Bottom of the eighth inning, Luke Bonfield to lead things off. These guys need three more outs, and the Hogs can make their plans for Omaha. Jonah Bride charges, throws, makes the play. This week's Wednesday Night Baseball presented by Hankook Tire features two of the top teams in baseball, the Nationals and the Yankees, as they wrap up their second or their two-game series coverage starts at 7 o'clock Eastern on the ESPN, also streaming live on the ESPN app. Nationals and Yankees. Luke Bonfield getting a great ovation from the fans here at Baum Stadium. Boy, Dave Van Horn had a big smile on his face, too. You know, it's got to be a beautiful thing to watch these young men cap off their career in this fashion in front of the home crowd. We don't get a ton of smiles out of Dave Van Horn. Same thing. There's, he doesn't show. The only emotion he really shows in the game is when he's unhappy with something. <laughs> Look at him. He, he, he's, he's cutting it up now a little bit. Dominic Fletcher stepping in. One and two on Fletcher. You know, guys, you, you, you've done this. You, you've had the opportunity. Ben, you went through the old school regionals. Berkey, you had supers. Mm -hmm. But is it hard to kind of put all – because all these celebrations, how quickly can you put all this behind you and get refocused? Because now here's like a new season coming out. Well, I, I think the teams that have been there recently have the advantage. You know, uh, we, we were brought up – Coach Berman used to always say, you got to be there a few times before you figure it out and you really go to win. And I really believe that some teams go to Omaha just to go to Omaha. And I think some go to win. And there's a different mindset. 
Well, listen to the ovation for this guy, Carson Shaddy, the senior, his final at bat in Fayetteville. There is Holland, Carson's mother. He saw his dad and stepmom a moment ago. Fans on their feet for this at bat. Boy, this has got to be an emotional moment mm. for Carson Shaddy. Well, whatever happens, he has had his moments in this Super Regional. Come on, Carson. Do it. Stop it. <laughs> so Carson Shaddy with the two out base hit. Let's get an update. Series. What a home run. If that one leaves the yard, it's high and deep to right. Is there enough? Oh, wow. That ball hung in the air forever. We head to the ninth. Arkansas, three outs away from Omaha. The Hog fans can feel it. Three outs away. And what has been a long baseball season that will culminate with a trip to Omaha. Everybody ready for the celebration. There are not many folks that have left this building. Well, Matt Cronin walked into the game with that. The left-hander, the sophomore, with 12 saves. Not a save opportunity, obviously, but he's getting some work here in the ninth, and this guy is filthy. Yeah, 96 on the scoreboard with that one, 93 on our gun, but it's all from the left side. It's a good breaking ball, and the heater is way above average. You see the numbers, 41 innings pitch, 51 punch outs, only 11 walks, kind of numbers you want to see from a guy at the back end of your bullpen. He's been waiting all weekend, and he walks into the yeah, game with yeah. that going on around him. And yeah, that'll get you juiced up. No, Noah Campbell, the freshman, stepping in against Cronin. Mm. Ain't nobody going to hit that one. 94 <laughs> at the bottom of the knees. Biggers scoops, throws, one out.
Our Capital One player of the game is Eric Cole. How about his day? Five runs scored, three for three at the plate, including a home run. He was a little sluggish Early, first two games, yeah. but uh, he found his rhythm tonight. Look, anytime you come up five times and don't make an out, you had a world-class night. This has just got to be a nasty matchup for a guy like Cortez. Well, yeah, if you're going to get that one called again, <laughs> yeah. it makes it, makes yeah. it a little bit right tougher, too. Real nasty. Ready to get the fungo out to reach that one, huh? They had him 96 on the scoreboard, 94 on ours. Yeah, that ain't fair. Either way, that's really fast. That ain't fair, lefty on lefty. That's when he dots it around the outside corner. Been all heaters too, Berkey. I'm waiting for one of my all-speed pitches, oh, but I think it's he's all feeling the heat right, here, right now. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's gonna play a little hardball in this inning. But if he pulled the string on one right now, something tells me Cortez might be a foot out in front. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Cortez with a couple of walks. A fly out and a pop up. Boy, he's hanging in there. Yeah, it just feels like Cortez go play summer ball. You know, it, you know, he may sign, he probably will, but if he doesn't, you know, he, he could be a guy that comes back and does hit. You know, it's just a matter of time for that average goes from 260 up to if he stays here. Of course, in today's world, the batting average statistic has really been devalued. Obviously, it's part of on-base percentage, but it's really about OPS. Let's get an update. Matt, what's going on? Thank you, Matt. We need one more out here to wrap this one up. Madison Stokes will step to the plate, and you can see the emotion now in the South Carolina dugout as these guys, some of them juniors, matter of fact, with Cortez, a draft-eligible sophomore. Mm -hmm. These guys will head back to Columbia, and they will head their separate ways, many of these guys, to pro ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, South Carolina, 10 drafted. Arkansas 11. Two and zero oh to Stokes. Meanwhile, these guys get to play some more baseball. That ball at 93, 94 have some move on it. That, that one cut. cut. Right that Ooh. one cut. We hadn't seen a whole lot of the cut, but but that that wasn't a fair pitch. Cut right in on his hands. 
And I don't know if he does it on purpose. Sometimes you just get around it as right. a pitcher. You get around it just a little bit. The way you finish your fingertips, you can make that thing cut a little bit. Smashed foul. Madison Stokes sending a parting shot to the Razorbacks in their dugout on the way out. But now there's two strikes here in the top of the ninth inning. T. Tolbert. The emotion of the moment on both sides. Losing the Super Regionals, that's a hard pill to swallow. And there's a walk to Madison Stokes, and that'll get us to Jonah Bride. Everybody on their feet here at Baum Stadium. Now batting, number 20, Jonah that's tough right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you pour your heart, your guts, and everything into it, and you get so close. Yeah, it starts in August, workouts, and four-on-ones. You get all the way to the edge of every college player's dream and come up a little short. That hurts. Bride fouls that straight back, and here's a guy that will certainly be missed at South Carolina, a class act, and Jonah Bride. He has started 186 consecutive games, the ultimate team guy. Yep, he is a fan favorite for many reasons, but what a what a player he's been, but like you said, just a first class kid as well. And now it's 0-2. Ronan's getting some work. Pitch number 20 and on I'm, the way. And I'm talking about all heaters, too. 20 pitches, 20 fastballs. One he kind of got around a little bit accidentally and cut. Lifted in the air to right. Cole will make the catch. And Arkansas has done it. They're headed to their ninth trip to the College World Series.